Here, Friday Night Fights. Are you there? I know I'm here. So, we have some wonderful matches tonight. And I am joined here, before we get into it, I should say, I'm going to be joined here by my good buddy pal, the old Nova Scotian, the cupboard slammer guy, Corden. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing fantastic, buddy. Doing real good. Uh, talk, talk. I did wow words hard. <laughs> let's let's do take two. Uh, tighten down the hatches over here for you know lockdown number three in Nova Scotia. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Saku and I are locked down again. So That's right. Not together, uh, but you know what? No. <laughs> that would that would be a that very be interesting great. days. Yes, it would be because we'd be nonstop casting. Although so, I have a baby, so you might not like that. Yeah, I get babies too, so we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get into more baby talk, let's jump into some of the matches that are going to be on tonight. So at 8 p.m., we're going to have uh, Legacy Series Gold Conference. We got uh, Kotomura from Chaos Theory um, versus Rufsky, which is from Do You Even Tonk, bro? Um, then we got 9 p.m., we got BGs, the quarterfinals. So we got Bob's Babes. Um, and for Bob's Babes tonight, it's going to be Stephanie and Riot's. Uh, then we got Bob's Bounty Hunters with Andrasti and Jump Float. Don't kick me out this time, Jump Float. Uh, then we have F2L Silver, uh, which is uh, THL Loomer and Blue Sombrero. And the final team that's in the quarterfinals is Phantom Force there with Blue Jay and Fire Emblems. Um, then we're on to a 10 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern. Another Legacy Series with Gold Conference with uh, Geranium Battle. Um, from Do You Even Tonk versus Isocles, Man of the People. From Chaos Theory, that's the captain, I believe. Yes. And lastly, we have at 11 p.m. Uh, the Wild Series match with uh, Snake Fods from Fell Me, I'm a Wreck versus uh, Mortal. Well, it's an awful artist, a.k.a. Wombat, a combat Wombat, I believe. Or Mortal, Mortal Wombat, I can't remember. <laughs> Mortal it. Wombat, I believe. Mortal Wombat yeah. from the Pog Merchants. So huge, huge four-hour evening tonight. So we're hoping to get the bands in for the first one. But uh, if you want to go over the first group there, that's going to be yeah. shown tonight. So uh, we're going to see right off the bat, uh, Kodamora and Rufsky uh, for this legacy gold matchup. Uh, both coming out of the five seed and both playing extremely well for themselves. Uh, both sporting a fresh 2-0 and look uh, over there in the 5 seed. Kodomora are going to be bringing uh, Mage, Priest, Rogue, and Warlock with Rufsky bringing out a Druid, Mage, a Paladin, and a Rogue. Um, so pretty standard brings. The Kodomora bringing the Warlock is pretty interesting. Um, I think it's going to suffer a little bit because Rufsky didn't bring that Priest. And that's typically what you want to see that warlock going after uh, is is punishing that slow control that the priest can do. So um, that might be a little bit of a of a weakness in Kodamora's lineup here. So we'll have to see how that warlock performs into some of these decks. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that warlock seems to be ripping apart priest a little bit on ladder um, and on stream. It hasn't been doing that great, but. Uh, at least with the, uh, the uh, gosh, what's that Hearthstone format that's going on today, tomorrow? That tournament that's on. <laughs> oh, Olgrimar. O- o- Olgrimar, there we go. I couldn't Ogre, think yeah, of the name. Master's Tour. Yeah, yes. Master's Tour. So, anyway. It's, yeah, I know um, um, I know. Uh, no Hands Gamer kind of tweeted out. It might have been a little, a little jest, but he tweeted out he was a little... A little nervous about like a warlock heavy because you know people might have been expecting a lot of priest brings, which I think priest was brought like almost seventy percent. Yeah. So he actually didn't bring priest just for that reason. <laughs> um, so you know it it kind of goes to show when someone like No Hands has that insight, then uh, yeah, yeah. So Ruski might have had a little bit of a of a look, and I mean, depending what this lineup is, it's it's going to be a little bit difficult to for Kodamora to get through. Yeah. Um, I think for Rufsky, that mage might be gone. Um, it's either the mage or the rogue, uh, because the druid, if that is a clown druid, uh, does extremely well mm-hmm. into priests as well. 
Um, and I mean, on the side for Kodamora, it's going to be difficult, but I mean, Paladin is a strictly a, a better ban. I don't think the Warrior's too scary because you do have the Warlock with, <clears throat> with a lot of removal, Priest with a lot of removal. So you might even see a Mage or a Paladin ban coming out of Kodamora there for Roofski. Yep, yeah, I would agree. Yep. So we're just trying to queue up the band so we can get the players rock and rolling right at yeah, the 8 p.m. mark. Still waiting for uh, for Rupski to add me there. Yeah, same as uh, Kodamora, so just kind of... We will wait a little bit. But yeah, I, I guess speaking of the um, Master Story, we've got a couple uh, THL participants going in right now. You don't um, say... I guess the biggest shout out right now would be to German Shep, uh, who's sporting a, a spicy five and zero right Ooh. now. So congratulations on the first day there, uh, German Shep, and hopefully you can continue that into tomorrow. Um, we and... know what we know what German Shep's like in the uh, in the THL is he's a force to be reckoned with. So yeah, absolutely. And I, if anybody wants to check that out <clears throat> um, in the uh, Tespa and and uh, Tryhard stock. Uh, donkey's uh, link there and you can actually uh, tag all of the people like your highlighted people that you want to see um, so I've got like a lot of people highlighted um, like uh, Kalis Luna so Jimmy Shoes and stuff like that so it's a really cool way just to uh, keep keep track of everybody when yep. you're and it's trying to a... find all your friends <laughs> I was just going to say they had like over 400 440 or 400 I couldn't remember what Froden said it was, it was quite a lot of participants so 400 plus players trying to bash through bash their way through to uh to uh to saturday's games so yeah no it's um a lot of people i know are or are, are, are actually funny enough i i know a lot of people don't usually play once they get the three losses yeah um but i think a lot of people this time around are sticking mm -hmm. in to play for the money at this point so well that's that's um, yeah that's the incentive i think that's yeah what, if I remember correctly, that's what Blizzard was trying to do is make sure people are staying engaged, play their games. Yes, it could be like one in one in six or whichever, but you just never know. You never know. All right, All so right. Ruf Rufsky's uh, responsive. I'm not sure if he's uh, added you yet. but uh, He did, and he actually tried to battle me. Okay. Um, <laughs> 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 and I had to promptly de decline. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I'd love to play you, uh, Rufskis, uh, maybe after this. But uh, right. um, you know, if you if you're up at uh, one o'clock, <laughs> be two o'clock <laughs> our time. Yeah, that's it. No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we do have a ban from Kotamora, which is going to be Rufskis Mage, which we expected. Right. And then Rufski has banned. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, priest. Wow. Okay. That's so. Th so that tells me that this druid is probably token. Yeah. Um, with the priest gone there, I, I don't think you'd ever expect that druid to be clown and see a priest brand. So, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's a token druid at this point. Then. All right. So I'm just gonna get the players rock and rolling. Rockin' and rolling. So this is the first matchup between Chaos Theory and Do You Even Tonk? And um, coming into the third week, mm -hmm. they're separated just by a few points, three points. And, you know, down the line, these points really do matter, uh, especially when you're kind of fighting for that last playoff spot or even if you're, you know, looking to get that first round by. So uh, it could be. Could go towards a little bit of a of a story ending there for for these teams that are so closely battled. It's it's a little early right now to say, but uh, you never know. All right, let the players know that they can start going. And we're just waiting for. I think we got them. Uh, so for our spectators, uh, sorry, our, our viewers out there, we have Kodamora is going to be at the bottom of your screen. Our first to spectate with. Uh, Rufski at the top. So let's get into it. Get into it. So yeah, um, leading out, we've got Rufski coming out with his paladin. Uh, looks like that's a secret style, um, secret aggro, I suppose. And Kodamora bringing out that mage right off the bat. So should be an interesting match, but favored for the mage, I believe, due to the um. 
wonderful powers of devolving missiles. Yeah, devolving can can <clears throat> spell such disaster in this game, but um, it's really going to be up to the fact if Kodamora can get uh, encounters flow early on enough to really make a disruption. Um, because if Rufsky just kind of plays, you know, a decent game, and you see that Ogre Mancer teched in as well there, so it's going to spell a little bit of trouble for uh, Kodamora if this game goes a little bit longer. Just a little longer. All right. I was talking to uh, a friend, yeah. and he was saying he doesn't play too much um, Hearthstone, just kind of getting back into it. And he mm -hmm. said that Ogre Mancer might be the ultimate uh, screw you to mage. And I <laughs> didn't really understand, but he said, well, it's literally one health out of fireball range. Yep. And, it's, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. That makes a lot of sense then. <laughs> but it was just... Very funny that he picked yeah. up on that Ogre Mancer right off the bat was just, uh, given, we don't like you, mage. Get out of here. Yeah, given the two-finger salute from a double-headed ogre. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Not a, lot of, not a lot of action going on, but your atypical Sword of the Fallen ready to poke at the Thanos there. Or maybe not. Yeah, um, I don't see... A reason not to hit it. Uh, it denies a cram session that if we do see, but I guess the on the side of Ruski, he's hoping to pull Oh My Yog, yeah. um, which unfortunately that sword did not. So, I mean, this cram session is pretty strong. Um, you can even font of power before mm -hmm. see if you want to play a minion, but I think the card draw is just too good here. Yeah, I would agree. Oh, another cram session, but yeah, no mana, no mana. Yeah, no refreshing spring water in hand for Kodamora and no encanters flow. So uh, the longer this goes on, um, the worse it's going to get. How long can this go on? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, so we got to... There we go. Commander coming out. Yeah, pretty standard turns coming out here. And now, I mean, you've seen what you've seen from Kodamora's side is you have to respect that that is Oh My Yog. Yep. Um, you've played spells and not procced it, and you saw the other one was a, a Noble Sack. So, um, unfortunately, I think you have to really play around this, um, this Oh My Yog at this point. Yep. So, freeze. Which, Free spell coming out. Oh my y'all gonna interrupt. Was it turning into a holy to... smite? Hey. Ow. Ow. Into yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh I don't agree with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, if you're, I mean if that's you're throwing the unfortunate it, you're, part. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. I was just saying like he, oh, yeah. if, if you're throwing it at your opponent's uh minion, then it should go on the minion. But anyway. Yeah, I don't know how they I guess they I, I, it's very strange that Oh My Yog it casts a random spell with the same cost, but it, I agree. I don't know why it doesn't cast on the same target. So mm -hmm. um, I guess it could benefit because if it's like, you know, a blessing or something like that, you don't right. necessarily always want a blessing your opponent's board. And then, like, what if you counter spell or are you Yog? I guess a refreshing spring water. It doesn't target anything. So then it, it's completely random. So yeah, no, I, I think I agree with you there. And I think the biggest takeaway there too is that um, brain freeze, which is the frost bell, which could have provided a little stall for Kodamora in the way of those little uh, ice shards yes. with the freezing. Yep. Kodamora setting up for the, uh, the combustion possibly later. Yeah, uh, double combustion next turns could clear the board of the ogre and also the um, taunt that comes out of it. Ooh. We're going to see the conviction here. Does it hit? Yes, it does. Pow. Interested to see. Pow. Okay. <clears throat> Just wants to push as much damage face as possible, and uh, I, I can't help but agree. Got another Oh My Yog coming out, so... Yeah, again, you got to test, and I mean, this is where Mage struggles with no 
real way to uh, discount these spells to, you know, test for, oh my God, you're unfortunately on the back foot. Now, good thing for Kodamora is Rufsky is running out of gas at this point in time. Yep. He does have the second um, North Watch commander. He could draw another minion, but really, Rufsky's looking for most likely the Knight of Anointment off of that. So all my Yug brings out. Wow. Oh. What are we copying? Nothing. A, a whole lot of nothing, and you're just giving your minion a two-two. Unfortunately. Um. Yeah. Ouch. Uh. I might have elected the brain freeze earlier. I know. <clears throat> but uh, we are facing down eight, eight. here. Yep. And I mean, yeah, face, Northwatch, and Revenge. Yep. I think we're looking for a flame strike. Come on, flame strike is what Kotamura is saying. I need, yeah. need a little help. Need a little love. That's a big eh eh. That is a flow too late. So, now, combustion. Double combustion. You can do that in between the risen yeah. skeleton. Yeah. You can, so you can combustion the two to, yeah, this here, and then you can combustion the divine shield and leave it up for four. Okay. Hopefully not the divine shield. Okay. Yeah, these secrets are just paying dividends. I just think that's still too much. Are we six, seven, eight, nine, ten? One damage short. We are a sword of the fallen short. <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, uh, conviction. Um, Trying to uh, see hand of a. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking the hand of a doll is just ways for, for Ruski to push this additional five or additional one point of damage. So, what do we got? First day of school, do we get a buff out of it? No. Nope. No buff. Well, so we're just going straight to the face. I like playing your stickiest minions here. I mean, the worst thing is, is Flame Strike punishes you. Um, maybe the Righteous over the second, but Ugh. could be wanting to hold it. Mask of Cthulhu is just not enough to rip apart the board. Two, four, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, no way. Yeah, it, even even perfect hits. You trade. You've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, thirteen with perfect hits in the trade. See, hopefully this is the Pexus Blast can bail you Ooh. out. Wow. <laughs> Does it ever? Holy moly! That was a... now. I like the trade into the one one here into the divine shield because you could have actually still cleared. I guess you're worried about, but blessings of uh, blessing of authority. Yeah, a little bit of damage control there, and uh, with a big seven eight in the way. Yeah, I mean he's Kodomor is finding his way to buy time. I wonder how often this happens. Uh, 30 health mint, uh, player versus a one one hit. I think one it health. happens in, in like um, maybe hunter priest matchups mm -hmm. where the priest is on one health, but the hunter literally can't do anything more because the priest is just. And then you see the hunter at 30 health conceding. <laughs> All right. So pontificating the fireball to the 6 6. Yeah, and I guess, I don't know, maybe just hoping for a ruined orb, uh, you, uh, devolving missiles. Can, I think you got to ping that, that. Okay. Yeah. I think you got to ping that, that uh, Argent. Get rid of that Sporling, because that's just going to turn your 7-8 into a pile of dust. Oh, yeah. Now we are a blessing away from death. Still just not getting oh. there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I 
I mean, we've got the masks now, and, and now these minions, Mask of Cthune can actually clear them up very nicely. Um, the worst part about it is, is for Kotomora, is once this 7-7 um, seven, seven is gone, uh, the yeah. Earth Elemental, he's looking not too hot. Nope. He's got to have... And with two... Go ahead. Uh, just with two swings on the weapon still, I, I don't know. You can't really font of power into any defensive tools. There's just another fireball. Do you font the power to see if you get some kind of... Uh, I think you have it? to. You can get the freeze guy, the uh, the new legendary, the four mana three three freeze. I think that's possibly better. Tough. Because this way you trade in or you ping, I guess. Yeah, ping, take that one off. Because at this point, Kodamora knows what that secret is. He, he can't play any more cards here. Yeah, okay, good. Because uh, if he actually did, that was that was it. Gathering Saver comes out, and we are... So Jandis, Ooh. Jandis could be the hero here. Yeah, I mean, that's Fireball. That's it. Wow. That, that's, so it did happen. Hey. Look at that. On one health oh. for three turns. No, at, at your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well, as disappointing as that was, unfortunately, Paladin just lost all its energy and mage was able to capitalize on that and away we go so match one yeah is... that that secret paladin list once it runs out of gas and those secrets are done i mean you're unfortunately in a very awkward position that you just don't have card draw and you just don't have ways to push more damage like we literally saw kunamura on one health for about three turns and just no way to clear it for uh to get there for Rufski. so mm -hmm. that's a tough one hopefully he can bounce back and come through but that mage is gonna get through so currently one nothing for kodamora and chaos theory right now and we have warlock versus druid this is going to be interesting. If Kodamora is running... Wow, Ogre Master here too. Ogre Master is so good against these decks right now. Uh, such spell-heavy decks coming out from Roofski. And, Agreed. I mean, Ogre Master is just... Oh, I mean, we had Ogre Master on Roofski's side. Um, yes. Kodamora is about to do it back to him. I think it's a smart, smart ad um, or tech, as people would say. Uh, Armor. knowing you're going up against Druid, the chances of it being a token Druid is pretty high. Yeah, even against Clown. I mean, Clown yeah. likes to just play Wild Growth, likes to play, yeah. like, you know, Lightning Blooms and, and things like that. So, um, no Gibberling in hand for Rooski just yet. So... Um, still deciding when they want to go off that turn. You could see Lightning Bloom, but we're just going to Hero Power hit. Most likely a Glowfly next turn. Right. Ooh, Backfire is extremely nice. Uh, would put us up, so we could ditch the coin if we're worried. Um, I'm thinking you need the school spirits don't even need to backfire <laughs> that is an amazing top deck from kodamora coming into this turn for you yeah that is a nice board clear card to thwart druid's uh any attempt to uh move forward so all right hovering around some cards thinking about what he's got to do Interesting yeah, I, move. yeah, I think on Rufsky's side, he's saying he, he probably wants to glow fly in, or he wants to put this soul down, or he's going to arbor up here. Okay. Um, this was definitely the biggest. The, the glow fly turn is interesting as well, but you've got soul in hand, mm -hmm. but you're going to be overloaded for three next turn with the power of the wild. So this is your least punishable um, by school spirits, but. Uh, we can clear up a good chunk of this board with Soul Shear and Drain Soul. 
um, but we are leaving up uh, some some nice minions for Druid to buff. Mm. I would agree. Kodomora might be thinking of the coin ogre here uh, to corrupt the cascading, actually. Um, I don't know if I like that. I think if you leave these up, even with the taunt that's going to come out from the ogre, I don't think it buys you enough time. You do know that Rufski has one, only three mana next turn. So there's not a ton he can do. The only punish really is Power of the Wild. And unfortunately, we see it in hand and a Lunar Eclipse pickup mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Wonder if we ever just see the Power of the Wild and clear the taunt and clear the ogre. Um, I don't think so. It opens you up to a lot of AoE clears. So we're going the, the long route by... Well, it's just... Same. Uh, I, I think I pay attention to the ogre. <laughs> yeah. So if you get nothing but spells in your hand, you're going, uh, what, what are we going to be able to play in the next two turns? Ooh, second ogre. <laughs> Sup? I mean, oh boy. Uh, there, uh, to me, this is an easy school spirit turn. Yeah. Um, into like a soul shear, just mm -hmm. completely locks the board out. Uh, not really anything. It actually leaves you with the one one armor vendor if you do choose. Good decision there. Yeah. Let the one one go face. And now with this Glowfly in hand, the reason the Glowfly is kind of awkward now is Ruski is slowly losing a ton more uh, of cards. Uh, Guess the Weight is obviously a great pickup there, drawing two off of it for one, mm -hmm. um, but we still can't play this Glowfly this turn, so... One man is short with no buff, no, um, no beans to uh, get ahead with the doesn't usually to token doesn't usually have um uh what's that zero mana card got why am I brain dead right now ouch yes it's, um it's not a coin but it's a coin <laughs> it's not a, yeah I think it uh, I know people have been trying to kind of work it in mm -hmm. but I think the includence of is. guidance or even the soul of the forest and oh Oh, you meant Innervate? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant Resizing Couch. No, no, no. I was Innervate oh. is what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, free coin is good. Um, difficult decision for Ruski here, because that Glowfly isn't sitting in hand. I think you have to rip it at this point in time. Yep. Sold. A lot to do for Kodamora. <laughs> yep. Get Soul Forest uh, hanging in, and on your screen, unfortunately. One player must have their mouse on the uh, the card itself or glitched out. Might be glitched. I'm not seeing it on my side. Okay, so it's glitched out on my side. <laughs> so we're probably just going to Cascading and full trade here. Um, Lucky Soul Hoarder is fine. It gives you an extra draw. Um, you could have cleared uh, completely with uh, the additional Soul Shard or or, mm -hmm. or Drain Soul, but I think this is completely fine. You're leaving Druid with one minion, and it's really not going to be that impactful. And the longer this game goes, the heavier it swings in Kodomora's favor. <clears throat> Another nature studies. Solar eclipse or feral rage? Oh man, I actually think landscaping. You think? You well, we've we've got double lunar eclipse in our hand. True, true. Yep. And we have no minion generation at this point in time. 
Um, we do have the soul of the forest, so we can honestly... I, I think... Yeah, we can... Landscaping, and then we could Lunar again, and then we can soul behind it. I'll be glad when the soul gets played, because then the card doesn't show up on my screen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to see it right about now. That ogre is finally dealt with. Yep. <laughs> I thought that uh, spreading plague was gone out of this uh, set. What's right? going on? <laughs> just... <laughs> Turns out one fives are just two twos now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long can this go on? I just realized the race skeleton is also uh, is just ogre mancer, but yep. um, but but a skeleton form and a sword and a sword. <laughs> just right. so much for Kodamora to do. I think he really got a really strong control of this game right now. Soul Shear, the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Do you bother the good thing about Yeah. Yo, oh, yeah, I think you got a full clear now. It doesn't really matter. Um, the good thing about getting these shards Ooh. in the deck, too, is for when you do... It's going to be fortunate. Uh, sociologist. Bump wow. Oh, what a bump. What a, what bump. a play. Well Definitely not necessary, but... I like it. What a bump. <laughs> like, you couldn't have asked for it any better. It's like, hey, man. <laughs> you're a tree. I'm a tree. Hey. Yeah, and uh, with that, your axis doesn't even corrupt the ticketist, doesn't corrupt any strongman, just a slapping 3 8 weapon. With a big 2 2 in the next turn, or 6 6 coming at you in the next turn. Blow fly into I would love to see innervate uh solar exactly perfect. So this is gonna just refill your board essentially when they die, it's gonna summon two souls. And hopefully gives Ruski a little bit of positioning to, Ooh, to push through. A little bit of Moart flavor in there. Wow, yeah, okay. Control Warlock coming in with some 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 spice. Yeah, I mean with Drain Soul it's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. You just heal for six and deal six. How shall I A lot of So I think a twisting Twisting is gonna come out here. Yeah. And just slam a jailer behind it, or oh no, just press your two mana six and six. There it is, <laughs> folks. Wow, Kodamora taking a commanding two nothing lead over this uh, match right now. And coming in with oops, strong. So right. just the rogue left for Kodamora. Yep. Um, coming into any of Ruski's, I I think, the Paladin. Nah, Rogue does so well into Paladin. Probably the main. The mage is gone. Oh my goodness. Druid again? Nope. It is a Paladin. So. It is a Paladin. Rogue does really well still with dealing with. I think Druid is a decent way to deal with it. Um, just because when you soul or or even just go wide, Rogue doesn't really have. The capacity to deal with extremely wide boards unless they're playing their minions for really less tempo and interesting that Ruski tossed the man crick. I'm very surprised man crick went back there. That's that's usually a keep, isn't it? Sometimes. I would assume so, yeah. Just he depends got on the matchup, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean a three four on three and then usually summoning a three ten and mm -hmm. rogue doesn't deal with that well at all. Um he got super rewarded with the uh, Night of Anointment into the Night Watch. Even has the Hand of a Doll coming off of that. So, yep. but on uh, Kodamora side, he did, or he might have chucked and gotten Man Crick, I believe. Um, he tossed one. So, Hand of a Doll. All right. It's a Three attack to the face. Oh, 
Yeah, Clay Mancrick. Get that out as fast as you can. Um, really no way for Ruski to deal with it cleanly. Let's see if we can get another... An Avenge. An Avenge. You've got an Oma Yog in there. Does he play that too? Yep. And three to the face again, I would think. Nope. Value trade. I guess he wants to protect the other 1-1. One, one. So let's see if Kodomora decides to play around some stuff. Frothing Berserker is very nice. Man can be with a value trade. That is at 4-4 four, four now. But... <laughs> but that 4-3 four, three four, three. will... Chin chick. Yeah. <laughs> the old Berserker. Are you get any good cards there? Eh, Mediocre. They're not awful. I like Kazakus. So, 4-3 bump in. Good. Ooh, that's a good card. Nice pickup there. Annoying pickup, as they say. Yeah, um, especially with a 3-1 on the board, yeah. right? <laughs> like That's so obnoxious that Mancrick really can't do anything uh, if it just wants to die. Swindle turns into first day of school. Hey. Wow, I'm the paladin now and gets a free weapon. Wow. That is crazy. I think you just want to swindle again, maybe? Foxy into another swindle to guarantee the draw. Yeah, he's going tour guide first, by the looks of her. Probably worried about that 1-1 one, one being buffed, but you didn't see any blessings last game. The Paladin came out, and we saw a lot of cards, because um, that mage game went very far, so... yeah. There's the man crick. Um, I think you might see it in double one drop. See what uh, see what Rooski does here. Uh, yeah, just I like for, it. for some of our viewers out there, Rooski is a good pal, and I think they can correct me if I'm wrong. Of uh, just in time, so mm. they they know each other in RL. Little fighting around um, or a little uh, I guess because Justin is the captain of um, Tong so a yeah. little friendly battle here um, I liked what Rooski did the man crick into the double ones because Kazakis if you want to go for the one drop to get the plus one plus one uh, it could pretty much swing this game directly back towards you Wow, some SI and in this wow, one. that's, that's I, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> what is this classic? <laughs> <laughs> Says the second place guy. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, you made it. I was very proud of you, buddy. So. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Second place, uh, taking down another than C Max. So I'll take that any day of the week. <laughs> um, the essay is interesting, though. I guess it just helps Rogue deal with those more aggressive decks like these paladins and. Uh, you know, hunters, things like that, that you typically would lose to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a, it's a very cool inclusion by Kodomora. I respect that. That's really, really interesting. Um, but we do see that uh, angry man Crick found his wife, Olga, unfortunately, for Vrufsky, and uh, there is now a 310 on the board. Ooh, it's a shadow step. Doesn't do anything. Uh, no, it uh, it does not, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it does stuff, just not with the board that uh, Komodomora currently has. Yeah. <laughs> if it was not Angry Man Crick, I think it'd be happy. <clears throat> Ooh, good brain freeze. Wow, extremely nice. Wow, Wand Thief as well. Yeah. That's a really good secret passage with three mana. <laughs> Keep the 310 as thick as possible, of course. And 
like the Kazagas earlier was what I was saying because now it's kind of an awkward turn, right? You got yeah. three mana and like you go for the five, I think, because they're the most impactful. Ten is too slow and one just doesn't do anything. So we got Rush and somebody copy, copy this. That's extremely That's very good. impactful. Yeah. yeah. You want Hold impactful quarter? You got <laughs> You got it. Ooh, double shadow step. This is, I mean, Want Thief can find some stuff here, but double shadow step, if we are still running Alex, we did see a 10 move back in, so I can't imagine we're not. Deep, deep freeze is an interesting one. Your next turn. Yeah, I, I think you have to, yeah. especially with such low resource management. I think you could afford one shadow step here. As Stephanie says, boop and boop. Just a little boop. All right. So, I, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I was just going to say, what's your opinion of um, an early uh, Octobot and bumping it early? Oh, I, I think it's a must, honestly. There's there's two reasons you, you typically will play Octobot, and it's to discount Tenmu and Alex. Um, the other reason is to discount your entire hand for, for one for Thalnos. Mm. Um, I think it's extremely silly <laughs> that Octobot is a 1-4, <laughs> um, personally. So, like, there's nothing that deals 4 mana that early, uh, other than really, like, Mage can deal with it with, like, spell damage and, and frost and stuff. But I, I think Octobot probably always comes down early if it's in your hand, because... You can either value trade it, mm -hmm. um, but this is actually just a lethal. Uh, or there it Rufsky. is. Rufski gets through with a paladin. Nice. That's a tough matchup for Kotamora. It um, is, yeah. That's a very tough matchup. Rogue's got, even with that SI in there, uh, Paladin does a very good job of going face. Found the Alex to be able to close it out, and you know, I was I was wrong on that Kazakas. He held it for the proper time, and he got some really good. Uh, I guess clay to build that guy. The clay columns are clay. <laughs> yeah, clay. for sure. Ooh, that was a card we didn't see last time. Vanessa Van Cleef. Van Cleef, yes. We needed flavor. We got flavor with Kodamora bringing his own own um. I, I had sandwich on there, but sandwich is not really the right word. Homebrew? There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, Van Cleef is, is nice. I know people have been trying to work, work her in, um, the new Van Cleef of Hearthstone. But on Rufsky's side, this is a hand. In prison, uh, Ganarg, with the both the uh, bumper cards with the conditioning, mm -hmm. this is going to be an extremely tough matchup for uh, Kodamora if the bumper car riders that come out of those uh, carts get buffed with that uh, conditioning. is isn't going to be hard for them to clear, you know, uh, turn five, some three threes rushing out of hand and just value trading across the board, which Rogue typically doesn't have the biggest minions, so value trading is, is a real thing. Okay. Bumper cars What's coming up? into the hand. Yeah. Hmm. Thinking of the Og Merchant, maybe, but I think you just hold. Weapon You're not worried. Master. That's right. Ooh, Playmaker is very nice too. Ruski's just. Pretty, he's got a lot in hand, but he just has to wait to play it. Yep. Um. So Sword Eater is probably going to come out next turn after the swing, and then your turn five is most likely going to be like uh, conditioning into something else. Hopefully, you draw, and then with that playmaker draw with these riders, uh, I don't see there's a way Kodamora sticks aboard uh, too often. All right. Brain freeze looking hard at that one. 
Oh, merchant. Smite this tutu into the ground. <laughs> nope, it's face. Oh, okay. wow, just making a very sticky board. Oh, boy. I still think Sword Eater's the play, but yeah. turn five, conditioning into a war mall, which is going to be uh, a two four or a two twelve. There are no saps in this deck because that's gone, and these are not secret rogues. So that that two twelve is probably sticking as a two nine or a two ten, depending on what he chooses to attack. That's interesting. Okay. I thought for sure you'd yeah. bump into the 3-1, three, three and then next turn you'd buff them. Blast have a, a bunch of the riders that are buffed, but that's all good. Yeah, I, I guess he's... Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. I think the riders are getting that buff is a lot better. Um, the three face damage is okay, but I don't think it's really what you're looking for in this game. But uh, still a full clear. Bumper car of his own. Still the same way, I guess. Got there the same way. <laughs> the big buff. Yep. Oh, I think you warm all this. Mm -hmm. That minion's just not dying. And then you've got Parade Leader with Playmakers, with Rushers. I, I, man. If there's an ETC in this deck, Kodamora's got a lot to be worried about. Yeah, yeah, I would 100% <laughs> agree. Kodamora got a lot of uh, low mana cards there, but with no board and really only one option on the board itself to engage with. Yeah, the, the field contact, brain freeze, just make sure that this 311 can't attack or get Shield of Honored and back over. We don't know if Shield of Honored is in this warrior deck, but um, I think this is fine. Field contact can be able to draw a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ooh, deck of lunacy, yeah. No. <laughs> oh. Mere entity. I thought maybe a brain freeze might have might have been a better choice, but Again, players seeing it differently. Yeah, possibly trying to steal away a like a, a highly buffed minion or a troublemaker, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, troublemaker is just one of those cards that can close it out. So if you can steal one away yourself, yeah, take that value trade. He's got two options there, yeah. It's gonna... Ooh, okay. Leaf Swan Thief up. Here for a good time. Nope. Second field contact and... Just a lot of... A lot of cards with a, a lot of nothing to do for Kodamora. I mean, yep. you've got <laughs> Wind Fury, you've got Secret Passage, which is which is great, but I mean, really, you've got the cards you'd be looking for. Um, poisonous. But, yeah, Poisonous Deal. Three? Yeah, Poisonous Rush. I think Poisonous Deal 3 is your only way out of this. Yeah, Taunts. Poison you're not going to play it this yeah. this time turn anyway, and yeah, freeze two. It's good. What did we get? Yeah, what we get? What we get? Summon stealth. Summon a copy. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Mirror entity. Okay. So probably going to get a playmaker. <laughs> oh, Rukara is so good. Rukara is going to prove to be a good pickup, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we could test this parade leader comes down. I mean, it's not the worst not to test it because you can just trade off your 3-2 your runner or even any of your minions or your face. Um, so we do have a 6-5 coming down, though. That's 
pretty impactful. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like the the rider or the parade leader coming down and the Rukara because each one of these attacks that then comes out of uh, Rufski is actually buffing your minions plus one plus one and making this sticky board even stickier. I mean, it is getting out of hand. Yep. I don't think this is wrong either. Uh, it leaves you pretty much with the exact same board you had, except now you have a 6-5. Kodomora in a rough spot. Rough spot. <laughs> yeah, uh, those four to face, and then yeah, you can't self lethal. So <clears throat> I think you just got a secret passage and 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 look for something. I don't know what you're looking for. Uh, burglar? Does burglar get you anything? What thief could get you Kona cold and buy you some time? Let's see. Uh, Rune Dorb is good. Brain Freeze again, of course. So you gotta save yourself now. You gotta Brain Freeze at 6-5. Yep. Yeah, just play that Burglar, man. Plunder is good if you can play it, but can't. Yeah. But we got a pretty full hand. Next turn, Plunder could be extremely impactful. Especially with all the low cost, exactly right. Probably yeah, and 4-7 easy. Yeah, and rushers to to clear it up a little bit more. Overlord picked up <laughs> on the side of uh, Ruski, but uh, just getting closer and closer to not being able to close this out. Um, wow. Yeah, that's that... a it's a board. In stereo, aerial, aerial. Yeah. <laughs> Well, eight mana. I, I can do it, Kodamura says. Uh, yeah. Blade of Knives. Where's my Blade of Knives at? Nope. There it is. Try to find a self lethal. Found, Found it. Lethal. Yep. <laughs> Good job, Kodamura. Proud of you. Ron would be proud of you as well. Wow. Well. Finding, finding lethal. On a very, very interesting turn of events, we get to see and say the best words in all of Hearthstone. Saku. Game what are those five. Words? Yes. Hi, game, guys. game five. Five. So we have Rooski's Druid versus Kodamara's lovely... Rogue. Yeah. And man, I mean, I think this is very druid favor, especially if it can get gibberling. Yep. Kodamora's got the early game. I mean, this is where I think Octobot is the keep. Full keep. I like it. Yes. 100%. It's cored and improved. I that is that gets my stamp of approval. Sponsored by Geo Fuel. Sponsored. <laughs> this this stream is brought to you by a five o'clock monster and a seven o'clock G fuel. <laughs> it was a long day. You don't have the energy. Gosh darn it! We sure do have your energy for you. I still got the uh, I got the new classified G fuel. It's there a water Milan. Great Walter Milan. Walter Milan. Spam some some Walter. Milan's in chat there for us. Yeah, if you got him, spam your Walters. Uh, so we do see the Jimbling picked up for Rufski, and we've got the Innervate, we've got the Lunar, we've got a lot of stuff we can do next turn. Yep. Uh, I'll be interested to see if we go in or just choose to wait one more turn. Um, because really, you can't do all that much. You can't really buff your board, and it can get taken care of pretty easily by what you see right now, and then you're basically giving the Octobot um, its free values. Gibberling coming down. 
The Intervate. Lunar. Oh, okay. Intervate coming down. I don't... So we actually could have Lunared first. I guess you're losing one mana either way. This saves, but now you have to Lunar for nothing. Yeah, I think you have to do it. You made the play, Rooski. I think you got to do it, bud. Make a sticky board. <clears throat> Rogue can't handle it right now. Yeah, I think what we needed to do was before the infestation came down was the Lunar to be able to kill the 3-2. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't have gotten the full value because of the low cost on the infestation, but then you would have been able to, to utilize the mana a little bit more. Um, Octobot doing Octobot things, like you said earlier, Saku. Bump it, bump it early. Bump it early for the rogue. Wow, renew. This game just got silly. <laughs> I think you just slam another <laughs> Octobot. I think so too. I think that's the play. Just. Are you. Ooh. Okay, swindle probably. But... Oh no, you can't play that this turn. Wicked stab. Wicked. Just looking to go for as many draws as possible. I don't know. I think there was a cleaner way to deal with that. Hmm. And I don't know if we want to be taking our minions off the board against the druid. Because um, now we can innervate Lunar Arbor. Yeah. It's a sad day. Lunar, okay. Yep, yeah, you can Lunar the 3-2. Yeah, you can value trade over, and then uh, that oh. leaves you with a very... Okay. Good enough. Yeah, I know people like to... I don't know. That was a weird turn for me. Especially popping your own souls, because... Once these are dead, they're just gone. Um, typically, you want to be able to soul when you know you're going to have a board returning to you on the next turn. Yep. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, we still do have the Glowfly in hand, so definitely not out of it. And the Guidance could definitely pull us something with the double Innervate as well, so, or the single Innervate. So. Plunderer doing some work. Yep. That Octo okay. Octobot would have been good to slap on there too, but trying to keep that board clean of druid buffs and stuffs. Guidance mm. is Centurion is good. Well, too late right now. Yeah, I mean I, I think you just want to take the resizing. I really don't think you want to take the overload here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it depends on what we're going to do next or this turn, because I think we need to innervate Glowfly, but that only gives us a board of three minions. Which you're facing down three anyway. Yeah. Like, I think the gibberling and then playing, then the guidance and then resizing, because we could have been filling our board right now. Guess the dead head. Death head cultist, Death's, probably. Yeah, Death's head cultist. That's hard to Death. say. Death's yeah, head. Yeah. I want to see dead head for some reason. <laughs> Why do I want to see dead head cultist? There's a lot for Kodamore to do. I kind of like going for a one drop here and just being able to like buff the board or clear it. Rush. A rare one drop. Rush, you can then get poison or even just like the plus one, plus one. Um, unless we did go for the five. We went for the five, I take Divine Shield. Oh, we went for the five, okay. Yeah, went for the five. So what did he end up picking up? Rush, summon a copy. Summon. Rush and That's summon a copy. Very good. Probably some of the best. 
Three two to the face. And Rufski slapping down. What does he get? How many spells does he get? One, two, four. three, four. I might just see the Innervate Solar Arbor. And that's what he sees. No, oh, he's gonna, yeah, he didn't have the mana after he, uh, yeah, you needed the inner because you were on six, you had to go seven. It would have given you a board of, uh, of five, no, not five, of six fours. Mm -hmm. So, this golem's gonna give value, a lot of value here. You can follow it with a guardian. I was gonna or, say, uh, yeah, throw, throw the guardian out, get a discount off it, and. Yeah, the you would just even just uh, guardian the one of the one ones mm -hmm. and trade the octo in, and then your entire hand is now cost zero, <laughs> pretty much. Look, look how silly this is about to become. Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm I well only, aware. I wish. <laughs> I just yeah. Oh wow. I mean these do spawn the double buffs. I don't see a reason to kill any more because you can't. Oh, okay. Trying, trying another one. Applies Prunder coming out to play. Yeah, and Swatchburger, you're gonna board lock yourself this way though. Uh, unstable. Unstable fell bolt. Uh, oh man, arbor. that arbor up is a brick. I mean, we're just dead next turn, aren't we? Nineteen, 19 plus eight. Yeah, it's exact. Wow, I didn't think a Wicked Stabs were both in his hand, but they are. Yeah, and they both cost one. <laughs> Arbor up. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, if he doesn't punch, he's safe, but he does punch. And we do have that dagger, actually, so the dagger would be... Uh, actually, we removed 15 and 8 is now 23. 23, yep. So, uh... 24 with the dagger. So, looking right now. I think you just dig for want with one maker after. I think you just push. Yeah, throw unstable fell boat. What's, what's that do? I forget. Uh, it kills one of your minions. So, yeah. uh, honestly, just the renew, I think, is fine on one of your minions. Yep. Um, and then you'd be able to play one maker or one thieves. Because this board locks you. So, now you're kind of committed to playing one thieves. Or you're committed to trading, sorry. Uh, Cone of Cold, Cold is... I mean, just allows you to push face. Yeah. And then... Right upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, there's... You've seen both souls. Oh my. Interesting, okay. Alex... So brain freeze. You, you could trade and and uh, Vanessa, I guess, to get back a uh, an arbor up of your own. It'd be a little spicy, but uh, this is pretty locked out. Yep. Man, I I think Rufski had the opportunities to go really wide, and I think he chose to hold back a little bit. Uh, like the Glowfly Swarm from turn one is still sitting in hand, like from his Mulligan phase. True, true. So it, it's tough when you see that. I mean, I this was a final push, but yeah, Rufski just calls it, and Kodamora avoids the 
very, very close reverse sweep. I mean, hats off to Ruski. Still getting your team two points is uh, more than you can ask for in a loss. Yep. Um, Kodamora, congratulations on getting those four points for your guys and starting Chaos Theory off on the correct foot this week. Let's see if we can uh, chat to Kodamora real quick before we jump into the Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds. Okay. So they agreed. Okay. Oh, there it is. Hey, Kodamara, congratulations on the win tonight. Must have been a, a stressor with uh, winning the first two games and then having to duke it out with uh, with Rogue. If you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hello. Hey. Uh oh. Can you hear me? Yep, we yeah. can. Yeah. Can you hear us? I can't hear you. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe just type to him there. Oh, no, I can't hear you. Hold on one second. Sure, sure. Yeah, that was a that was a tight one. Joys of technology. <laughs> the joys of technology. <laughs> poor Roos. Poor Kodamora. Had to go through the ringer there and get in the win and now uh, fighting with with a uh... with Discord. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah, I... hey. hey. Congratulations on that uh tight 3-2 victory. Yeah, I uh I think I was so shocked that I won game one that I just was misplaying all over the board, especially with Rogue. It was just, I, I just made some bad decisions, and he played really well. Yeah, yeah. You, you both did. I mean, uh, Paladin was always going to be a big struggle in, in the uh, versus Rogue. So. Oh, yeah. And we like some of your uh, little hey. tech, tech, tech choices, which was uh, seeing, seeing Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky... Um, SI agent in there. You know, it was funny. It was one of those that I had one slot open, and I was like, you know what? It's always been good, and it fits the kind of theme of the deck. And I was like, two damage just can't go bad. I mean, <laughs> so I, I put it in there. It was like, if nothing else, it was good tempo play. And, you know, when we did the lineups, um, I was talking to Icicles about it, and we really geared towards uh we either choose okay are we going to go against control or more aggro style mm -hmm. especially with the decks now they're more aggro so we just gear all the decks to deal with druid basically and so you know having the extra two damage to take care of one minion or just to tighten up the board a little bit and it's it's good against uh pally but it, it's horrible against uh warrior i'm never going to beat warrior with this lineup, no, I don't think. No. so i mean it's just that's just the loss i give up yeah, that warrior matchup was, uh, I guess, payback for the for the first game, <laughs> where he had a uh, one had you on one three turns in a row, and you just eked out the win. Like Earth Elemental must be your new favorite card. It has to be. I mean, there's yeah, yeah. What like, a savior! What, I, I didn't even think of this in and out. That the thing was like, okay, there's the only way I can get out of this is if I get some taunt, like any taunt, and I was. You know, sometimes Hearthstone just gives you those those high rolls, right? And and I just had enough behind it. Mm -hmm. to, to That's the thing too. Like I think you could still have tried to got like Greybow could have come out there, and it still yeah. wouldn't have been enough to save you. But that yeah. like two extra health and just the unfortunate time, and he just had to get through it. There was no direct damage in that deck, and yeah, you pulled out an amazing game one win, but. <laughs> I mean, were you nervous when the rogues started kind of coming up short against yeah. the reverse? And then coming into Druid, I mean, he had Gibberling, and he actually chose to hold it for quite a while. So, I mean, I think in that matchup, if the Gibberling comes down against the rogue, um, it kind of just closes it out, um, no matter how much it really you does. Yeah. yeah. You but that Octobot turn. <laughs> Well, it, the thing was, is like I, I was thinking about it, and you know, I'm always with, with the rogues. I always try to play it really like board aggressive, and so coining out just to get a three-two on the board, just to start trading early, just to maintain some sort of board presence. 
Um, it's not optimal, but it just seems to give me a chance, right? And I, I've, sometimes you have to play to the person and make have them make choices, right? So if you put something on the board and they're so afraid to lose it or they don't want to trade it, because um, that in a weapon on turn two can kind of just trade with the early game a little bit. Um, so maybe just gave them something else to think about. But yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those with rogue wins when it goes wide super early. Um, but other than that, it just it, it can be a struggle because they just overrun you. I mean, mm-hmm. Drew can just drop too much on the board, especially with the uh, the death the death rattle. I mean, I think two of his games he got off like double casting on the death rattles. Yeah, yeah. You... Either, I, either I ignored it or I was able to deal with it without a surprise. I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. When I was inter- able to do that. I thought it was okay. Yeah, it was interesting to playing the 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 double on the uh, the gibberlings there, but. Uh... They they had a different uh, line of what was going to happen, so and obviously had to deal with it as well. <laughs> he couldn't just let it let it sit there. So, yeah. well, and that's that. I think Rogue does really well with just doing onesies and twosies on damage. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's able to chip it down, and you know you don't need to get rid of the whole board; you just need to get rid of most of it. And I think I think it was a tale of two like uh, of golems, right? So like in the game I lost, I just I. Against Warrior, I wonder if I had picked the Taunt instead of the Stealth, um, because maybe I would have been able to withstand more damage and then gotten to some weird Alexstrasza turn, but um, I got really greedy, and I was just hoping to try to get some Wind Fury action on one of the guys <laughs> and try to swing. It was a stupid line of play. I shouldn't have done it, but that was, that was my thought process. But then At that moment, against, yeah. Yeah, and but against uh, uh, Druid, I think just getting the rush out there, just getting big guys on board it's just really hard for them to deal with it and then you put them on the clock and then they have to start trading just so you don't die and mm-hmm. yeah it was good well with that we want to congratulate you for being three you know this uh this season and congrats to uh chaos theory and and thanks to you and uh, ruski jumping online uh to be on stream it's really really great to have you on on uh and cast this match going to game five it was a pleasure, and thanks for having us on, and uh, I hope uh, to do it again in the future. Yeah, man. We'll be reaching out soon. Take care. All right. Well, wonderful match. I always love those game fives. So now it's just a matter of hoping all the rest of our games go game five. Hey, Gordon. <laughs> yeah, let's hope this <laughs> battleground doesn't go game five, or that would be extremely messy. All right, so we're going to transition into dun, 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 Battleground. So it's already started. So we're, they're about six minutes in. Um, so I'm just going to review the teams real quick. So we've got Bob's Bounty Hunters with Androsti and Jump Floats. Uh, F2L with uh, THL, or F2L Silver, um, with uh, THL Loomer and Blue Sombrero. And then we have uh, Bob's Babes with Stephanie and Riots. Uh, then we have Phantom Force, which came on super strong late, late in the uh, season there. Um, and capturing a spot there f- uh, with Fire Emblems and uh, Blue Jay. So we are going to get rocking and rolling here in two seconds. Um, was there anything you wanted to add with regards to the teams that are spectating tonight? Um, Not a whole lot. Um, I know Fire Emblems really, really put it on in the last two weeks there, and that, I think, has a huge deal why Phantom Force is... Uh, fought their way back into the playoff position and and actually overcame F2L uh, actually dropped off a little bit and got the last spot so um, that is who I'm currently spectating as Fire Emblem oh, right geez. now that's, that's, that's who, who I picked myself <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go to your view right now so um, while I yeah. tally up the uh, the heroes so is the sound okay on mine? I always this, turn mine off. Yeah, it sounds good. I'll, I'll turn mine down a little bit here. So Sweet. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just going to take a quick run through. Uh, first couple turns are a little bit chaotic, especially we got in here a bit late. But real fast, we've got uh, Blue Sombrero on the Mill House. We've got Blue Jay on Queen Togwaggle. Riots on Lord Jaraxxus. Uh, THL Lemur on Nostamo. Jump Float on Hook Tusk. Steffi is on Jandis Barov, Androsti on Rag, and Fire Emblems on Cthune. And that is who we're facing or looking at right now is Fire Emblems on Cthune. Out of this game are Murlocs and Pirates. So expect big minions, Saku. Big minions indeed. So, all right. So I'm going to 
double check our heroes again. So you can just let the uh, let the fans know out there who's doing what to where. Who's <laughs> what? Yeah. So yeah, I mean these first couple turns for Cthune are gonna be painful. Um, Fire Emblem is actually taking a bit more damage than I think they want to be right now. Um, but hopefully that hero power is going to stabilize them. We do see a triple, not quite this turn, but a. You can actually only single buy as well. All right, gonna gonna freeze those triples and and hopefully find something a little further on down the line. Uh, coming into Steffi's turn, uh, who's got three dragons showing up on the board right now. So um, these are the turns Fire Emblems really needs to. Uh, level out the damage uh, that they're taking. Uh, this is where Cthune really needs to have impact with that hero power, find some impactful minions, and kind of coast through the rest of the game. Because with no Murlocs, that means Poisonous is extremely difficult to get. There are only two minions in the game, technically three, with uh, the Amalgadong um, that can get Poisonous. So we will see how it goes. That frenzy hit is extremely nice for Fire Emblems. Doesn't proc, and this probably gives them the win. Yeah, wow. It's been some hard action the last couple of weeks where some people were getting ousted with like on turn turn six. <laughs> so, yeah, that has to do with that. Um, the blacksmith, I. I know a lot of people do not like the fact that, oh, wow, we are going for a three drop here. Do it. Oh, Crackling Cyclone is amazing right now. Awesome. Fire Emblem is having a really strong turn now, finding um, some good minions and has an actual really good menagerie board right now, too. Um, hopefully to find some Mithrax a little bit later, but... Um, yeah, the, the Blacksmith is a card that a lot of people, or I guess a character that a lot of people have been having issues with because it can do exactly what you said. It can, once it uh, has its frenzy effect, it gives two plus two plus two to the board. And on the early game, that can literally make you get hit for 10 and 10 and 10. And you can just die from good hits from the Blacksmith. It wasn't uh, it wasn't really a problem earlier on, if I remember. It just only started becoming a focus on some of the, the people and what what happened to your minions on on the board, right? After the first yeah. hit, yeah, I think people just kind of assumed blacksmith was always you know not the best. Um, to definitely, you don't want to be like tripling it. You don't really mm -hmm. build around it. It's pretty much there for you know a turn like three or four uh, just to get you through that early game because really there's in the early game you're you're not dealing five to one minion very typically right yeah all right next uh well next two turns we'll jump over to i'm spectating riots right now so and they Perfect. are they are jaraxis at this moment doing a um demon and kind of dragon ish build so okay interesting get over there right after this so fire emblem is is like i was uh saying earlier starting to level out found the really good minions starting to buff them up and actually has found four different minion types so that means light fangs are going to be extremely important uh mithraxians are going to be very very strong as well so we'll see once we leave if Fire Emblems can find some of those key minions. Uh, he is playing down a, a Tavern tier uh, compared to the rest of the lineup. Millhouse actually at five already, so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> blue, blue doing things. Yeah, I mean, Millhouse is so funny that the hero power or the Tavern up costs more. But you always see mill houses have the most mana or gold efficiency, especially with pirates and demons, um, because you pretty much get free minions. 
or free money. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! Wow, that was what a uh... clutch hit. <laughs> I can't. Just I, my mind is blown right now with that that, that trade. <laughs> <laughs> that saved himself a lot of damage. Yep. Like he could have taken like ten right there. So um wow. So Fire Emblem is actually coming into Steffi, who has uh, unfortunately found herself at the bottom here. So um seven health as a and and going into beasts with no poison. Yeah. I don't know what her board looks like, but I think this might spell disaster. Um yeah, Fire Emblem's just hero power and Tavern Up taking a, essentially a turn off uh, as he's been doing very well over the past couple turns and just needs to get up to those Tavern 5, Tavern 6 to find those mm -hmm. extremely impactful minions. Riot's going up against Blue Sombrero this turn. We'll uh, key in on Fire Emblem's and his success is right now. Yeah, we'll watch us one more here. See if we see our first knockout of the semifinals. And yeah. Oh, that is a 454. So depending how these hits go. Now, the biggest part about this is that there might not be a lethal because Fire Emblem's board doesn't hit for very much. And actually, you're going to Ooh. lose. Yeah, he is. Interesting. So, so Steffi lives and actually pushes 10 the other way. So puts Fire Emblems on, uh, on point. So. On point. So, yeah, we will leave him now and uh, see what happens when we come back. Uh, pivot over to Riot's board. Let's go Riot's. So Riot's is having a hard time. Right now, he's at four health. Four health. Oh man, yeah, that's uh, that's a bad day. Uh, da, 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 riots is four health. Yeah, so riots and Steffi teammates for Bob's Babe sitting at the bottom here. Uh, does get that triple and not what you want to be seeing. I guess Void Lord is okay, but you really don't have that many impactful mm -hmm. demons just yet. But it's probably the best. Hero power. Yeah. Ooh, that is a arm of the law. Coming up against... Uh, Blue Sombrero, or not Blue Sombrero, sorry. Uh, Fire Emblems, who we just left on that yep. Cthulhu board, who Steffi actually just put. So, I mean, we know a f we know 454 on the side of Riots, though. So, he, um, might be in a bit of trouble. Might be. Uh, not the greatest discovers. This is kind of the, the downside of Jaraxxus when you don't uh, go for the, the, the Veil Weaver and really just don't find your demons. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so the 1917 getting a Divine Shield is actually extremely impactful. It doesn't pass along its buffs, but it also isn't... It's going to be able to value trade like mm -hmm. we just saw there. Um but now there's nothing to go, and that is a kill. Reborn. Get you every time by one. Fire Emblems with the flawless victory. So, Riots gets the eight. Yeah. All right, so we'll flick on over to uh, Gordon's view. Who are you spectating yeah. right now? I am on uh, Lemur right now. Um, who is sitting on a nice mech build and uh, I think just waiting to come out of the combat that they're in right now. Going to start tripling some of these Kaboom bots and some of these Junk bots, so it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, decided to jump in on Blue Jay right now, who is um, Queen Togwaggle, or Wag Toggle. Yeah, the one of the 
recent uh, heroes that came back and actually has been changed uh, was plus two, plus one, but now it's just plus one, plus one. Um, essentially gives you uh, a, a light fang buff uh, every, you know, click of the button. For Lemur here, finds the double Cadgar's Apprentice, picks up that alley cat for a little money down the line. This is an extremely good board, but mechs are very difficult to win with. Um, they can definitely get you into top four, even top three, but they just really don't have the closing power. And these deflecto bots not really being that overly statted might might be a little bit tough. Um, but this shouldn't be too bad for Lemur here. Oh, there's the... Actually misses on the Cadgars, but gets both of them back now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this... Uh, this junk bot's going to do extremely well right now. Collecting junk as it goes. Getting thicker and thicker. Oh, we have Oof. our seventh spot, which is Fire Emblems. Fire Emblems, yeah. So gets, uh, after finding a little bit, does go out to Ragnaros, which was uh, in Drosti. So uh, there we go. We have an eighth and a seventh. So. Uh, for Lemur here, I think you want to get rid of your 3-3 three, three taunt, the uh, Iron Sensei, because you really don't want to be bringing back Iron Senseis. Uh, eggs are a great thing to bring back. Eggs are great. Iron Sensei? Speaking of eggs, I have mini eggs. What? <laughs> Where did you find mini eggs? Uh, bulk burn. Oh, uh, yeah. Bulk burn is great, dude. It's called COVID snacks. <laughs> COVID snacks. <laughs> All right. That is a Amalgadong, but <laughs> only one. You can't really fix it that well. That is not what we wanted to see. Yeah. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. Gets the leper. So that Mechano egg will come back. Um... Hmm. I honestly think I like the Kaboom bot a little further back. And so the Mechano egg dies. Oh, wait, the Kaboom bot has. Yeah, and it has the Death Rattle Microbots on it as well. So you got to be careful with these Kangor's Apprentice that you actually don't micro hit a Microbot and come back. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> well, Steffi is been bouncing that uh, Battle Master back and forth. She looks like she's in a little bit of trouble right now with this matchup here, but she does have a thick 157 dude just chilling. Yeah, and and as we said, this Kangor's Apprentice is going to end up bringing back a 1-1. One, one. Um, so... <laughs> Yikes. It's really going to be if we can pop these Divine Shields, and we can. Okay. No way that... Oh, ah, boy. but that pop there, and that's just... Uh, that is game, I think, for Steffi, unless oh, she can man. clear... No. We got a bunch of people that just suddenly... Be -booped Exploded? Out of the lobby. Yep. Well, I am still on Lemur. Let's see what happened. Yeah, so Blue Jay and Steffi getting taken down... Tying for six and fifth. So your top four are Blue Sombrero, Jump Float, Androsty, and THL Lemur. So two teams. Uh, uh, no, Blue Jay is, sorry, that is not right. Blue Jay is with. Um, uh, he's with uh, Phantom Force. Oh, yeah. So it is two teams. We've got uh, uh, Bob's Bay, or not Bob Bay, Bob's Bounty Hunters and F2L Silver. Uh, yep. Still kicking around here and actually have the perfect top four because Lemur is against Jump Float and Drosty is against um, Blue Sombrero. Yep. This is going to be great. <laughs> 
Yeah, with blue at four and Andraste at eleven. Um, it's pretty yeah. much one and done. Jump float seven. So this this could spell disaster. Um, I would assume we're gonna see a lemur Andraste um, fight, just because Andraste has been been on a two hit. So we will see. I, I will be surprised if mechs do win. They're extremely difficult to win with. And if Lemur does take it, it's I, really, really strong showing. We get a deadly spore for Andrasti. Oh, sorry. Heavy. We're on your screen. Sorry. Very big <laughs> board for uh, for Jump Float. Yeah. That is a thick Mithraxian. We do have the Death Rattle Coil. All right, we got the favorable uh, egg coming back, which is what we like to see. All right, drum roll on the death rattles. More yeah. death rattles. We just see blue and jump float take. Jump floats get three. And blue's got... So now yeah. it's just down to Lumir. Jump float taken down by Lemur. Okay. There it is. So we got the F2L Silver versus um, Bob's Bounty Hunters. Yeah, this is uh, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, the resets and the death rattles from Lemur are, are good and great. Um, and now remember... In this game mode, uh, teams are allowed to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So they're probably both telling exactly how the board looked <laughs> and how to position perfectly for what they're about to see. Um, I don't know if Lemur is going to be able to get through the health we see on Andrasi's side, he's going to need some key yeah. uh, redivines on his Deflecto bot because that is a large Schneeds <laughs> and that is a large Mithrax. <laughs> so, the old, oh, look at that. Death oh, Rattle. Wow, Baron Von yeah. Rivendell kicking in here deeply yes, for Andrasi. I mean, no... He knows that there's no um, poison leave, so he's not worried about it. Oh, yeah. That might have just bent it towards his favor. Ooh, 53.2% win chance. Yeah. I really think those Divine Shields just bent it back towards him. Oh. The Schneeds gets the Divine Shield, and it's going to be able to poke. The one one's going to take it off, though, unless it goes to the left. All right. Man, so close. All right, we got to be careful on these resets. That dragon keeps popping out. Yeah. Ooh. There's all the resets gone. Oh, sorry, no, there's one more egg. Great. Oh. <gasps> divine wow. shield on the dragon. Divine and shield on the divine shields. That's it. Oh, one off. So another another round. No, the death rattle is gonna oh it's gonna attack first. <gasps> Yo, the death rattle on the junk bot. <laughs> that is so clutch. So we're gonna jump over to my side here real quick for our viewers. So this is what Andrasti is setting up right now. Yeah, I I think we the Baron is so good, but you need a board spot, a buff spot. I guess he's probably just going to roll down to see if he can replace the Baron. The Anoyo module is a guaranteed Divine Shield, so I think we're taking that all the time onto our uh, Taunted Sneeds. And Devourer is going to be able to get us something else. It's a, it's a good strong turn. Um, on the side of Lemur, 
not a lot has changed. We're pretty much going to see the same board. Now, Andrasti has gotten rid of his Baron, so we are going to see the One Divine Shield, but now we do have the guarantee on the Schneed, so uh, that could really change everything. All right, here we go. Who is going to take first place? This is right down the middle. You couldn't cut, you couldn't cut this any closer. Poisonous just wrecked that Schneeds. Wrecking the really Schneeds. Good, really good trade and these cad guys are going to bring back the proper here Robert comes the Kaboombot and an egg. Yep. And this junk bot is just getting massive. Ooh. Oh no. Is the glyph gonna go for the junk bot? It doesn't, it misses. Alright. There it That's is. That's it. Lemur with the first spot. Wow. Boom. First place in the semifinals. I mean, F2L and Bob's Bounty Hunters doing extremely well there. Yeah. Um, getting first, second, third, fourth. So um, not yep. a surprise. And congratulations to those teams there. So we're going to run real quick who, uh, what the results were. So we got um, Riots at 8, uh, Fire Emblems at 7, uh, Steffi at 6, Blue Blue Jay at 5, uh, Blue Sombrero at 4, uh, Jump Float at 3, uh, Andraste at 2, and uh, THL Loomer at numero uno. So that about does that. And we got one more round for everybody. And as Steffi likes to do in blue, um, who do you think is going to come out for a hero package for players? Unless you are away. Are you away? You are. <laughs> All right, so Corden stepped away for a quick sec. So um, some wonderful plays there. Uh, by uh, THL Loomer adjusting to Andrasti. So now we're just waiting for the lovely people of the lobby to ready up again. So Yeah, are they taking their break or they're going they're, right back? They're, they're doing a quick break by the looks of it. Perfect. Get four people that are ready, but the game break react again with the uh, dogs when ready so who is ready right now it is zach steffi teacher loomer and riots so bob's bay is ready to get right back into it that's right they want to <laughs> they want to make up for what happened there the other turn but as uh this game typically does it doesn't give you doesn't give you everything all the time, so. Um. Something to talk about is the new uh, expansion for yes. Battlegrounds coming out, the new patch. Yeah, I was uh, watching Celissa, and she was just going over some of the the boars, I guess, are going to be pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Especially with the 3-3, uh, three, three, is it 3-3 three, three minion or something like that, tier 2? Tier three. Anyway, that that looks pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, there's there there gonna be some silly um interactions with Quillbores and uh their new addition is Blood Gems. So Blood Gems, Blood right. Gems is uh as uh Ron Mexico will love is essentially bananas. Um if everybody remembers bananas from standard, um you literally give a friendly minion plus one plus one. Um that's the whole point of them. Now there are some new heroes that uh, will use the gems, but I think every single quill bore uh, utilizes gems. 
Now, if that's uh, playing a gem or if the first blood gem played, there's a ton of uh, of things to do with the blood gems. And I think quill bores are going to be close to one of the strongest late games uh, in the game, personally. Yeah, I, I wish I would have stuck on the stream or at least read up a little bit more on, on what was going on with BGs. But there's also a hero that's coming out too, isn't that right? There's three, actually. Three, okay. So, yeah, so there's three. So uh, they've got, or sorry, two. I guess they've already, oh, no, there is three. I lied. Um, so Death Speaker Blackthorn, the okay. uh, Demon Hunter legendary, um, is a direct blood gem uh, hero so he's a passive hero power so after you upgrade bob's tavern gain two blood gems so this is very similar to omu whereas when you uh upgrade bob's tavern uh you gain two gold to be used that turn now the reason that i think blackthorn is going to be so good is because unlike omu you can't carry the coins over mm-hmm you can carry blood gems over until you find a minion you truly want to use them on or um, until you find units that are good to use with it. So Blackthorn is going to be extremely strong in the early game. And then I think if you're continuing blood gems, I think Blackthorn's going to be an extremely strong hero. Yeah. I, like I said, I wish I read up a little bit more, but that, that sounds like a really cool... Uh, hero to kind of start out even with your your starting battlegrounds for the first time that'd be a pretty cool hero to to play so yeah and then quickly is Vol'jin uh is coming and Zarelia is coming out as well nice so it looks like we have some eyeballs yeah i think they're about to dive right into this so S um, let's see if we can jump on some people here. Um, I'm going to jump on Blue Sombrero. <laughs> you you're going to jump on Blue Sombrero? I already jumped on Blue Sombrero. So I'm going to get off of Blue Sombrero. I, I, I can stop Blue and you can go. You can stay on Blue. Okay. <laughs> We're funny. same wavelength tonight, uh, bud. Dude, we have her. So I'll jump on her teammate there, Steffi. Where are you, Steff? All right, so Blue is going to get the Queen Wag Toggle. I don't think Blue had them last game. Somebody definitely did, though. Um, I'm not too sure who that was, but a uh, very strong hero, so I'm not surprised to see the run back with him. We'll find out in a sec, because who was Queen? Queen was Blue Jay, so that's why it was sounded familiar. All right, so Blue Jay, now Blue Sombrero. All right, so uh, bottom to top. Are we on mine or yours right now, Sokka? Uh, we're on yours. All right, so real quick, uh, as I like to go through the early games, uh, you've, as we said, Blue Sombrero on Queen Togwaggle, Fire Emblems on Mr. Bigglesworth, uh, Blue Jay on Hook Tusk, Jump Float on Kelasas Sunrider, uh, Andraste on George the Fallen, Steffi on Millhouse, Riots on Silas, and we have Lemur on Finley with the Rag Hero power. Taken out of this game are Demons and Beasts, so we are actually going to be able to see uh, Murlocs this time, so I don't expect having too many big stuff. I kind of enjoy a little bit without the poisons because it makes things a little bit interesting. Yeah, I think one of the best moves they made was removing Megasaur from Battlegrounds. Okay. If, uh, anybody remembers way back, Megasaur was just like it was in Standard, um, is that it, um, it adapted your Murlocs. Yes. So what people would do is, well, with Murlocs, Brand is an amazing, because he just doubles your battle cries. And I think... Every Murloc other than um, Old Murkai have a battle cry, and they're always about buffing. So Brand, it just fits into Murloc's great. And when you get to double adapt, which usually means you can give Divine Shield poison to your entire board, 
there was really no way to beat a late game Murloc build. Because it just kept going and going. You got it. It just was unfortunate. All right. The Sombrero here. Going to pick up the pair and be able to hero power. It's pretty good when with Queen Togwaggle. Or it's Togwaggle or Wagtog? It's Wagtog. Yep. Wagtoggle. That always um, trips me up. <laughs> yeah, that's very confusing, but I'm okay with it. Um, basically, you want to hero power every turn in the early game, uh, especially with being able to get minions of different uh, classes, I guess, or traits. Mm -hmm. um, you're just literally giving yourself a free Light Fang buff in the early game, which can just get completely out of control. Uh, you know, as we see, Blue Sombrero is going to be able to uh, tavern up this. And then he's going to hero power, and then really probably just, I would assume, buy the pair. Um, he's got a triple right in front of him, too. So buy freeze. Sombrero's looking extremely strong right now. Uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if next turn, if, uh, if he still wins, we see a tavern up and just another hero power to maybe sneak in a four drop or something like that. Yeah, we'll see what he does against Steffi here. BG caster versus BG caster. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a bloodbath. The undefeated versus the undefeated. I get a hundred percent win for for Steffi. Ah, uh, yeah. At um, reborn is going to be a big problem, and Glyph Guardian. It's a close one, but uh, yeah. Steffi smacking around blue. Puts him in his place. Get down there, she says. Yeah. <laughs> That's my teammate, Steffi. Oh, yeah. You're, uh, that's Legacy for you? Legacy, yep. Legacy, yeah. Because you're in Hero and Legacy this season, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Next, uh, All next right. turn, we'll jump on Steffi's, Steffi's view. Yeah. So, Blue, yeah, so goes for the, actually, a double buy and a hero power, which is fine. Um, wants to get as many buffs on this board as he can, and I think that's completely fine to be able to hero power on five, and then you'll be able to buy that um, minion in the same turn, so you don't really miss too much, and you get to discover a four drop next turn, mm -hmm. so it's going to be leaving him in a pretty good position. Um, it's tough because you'd probably want to discover on four uh, to be able to like discover a Mithrax or as I've been talking about the Light Fang, but we'll see what happens. Um, very decisive win here for Blue Sombrero into Andraste. Nice Divine Shield. It's going to clean up a bit of this damage. Um... And not take too too much, but still take a good uh, a good five to the dome here. Five to the dome. To the dome. So now we're just gonna jump over to my screen here. As you can see, Steffi's got some menagerie action going on with uh, some dragons and some taunts and some bots. Ooh, found a triple. Yep. Uh interesting i would personally my play here is just chill um you've got the south sea in hand uh to give yourself three gold next turn yeah, yeah i really like this play this way you can go to four next turn and then you can also buy the triple to go for a five drop nice nice work by steph yeah it's it, that. Yeah, super good recognition there. Uh, might take a little damage here from George, but I don't think she honestly probably is in a good position with the Kaboom bots ripping off some Divine Shield. So, and she definitely has a health total to to take a turn like this, uh, a more risky turn. Yep, yep, I would agree. But she's uh, seventy eight point two percent chance to lose this match with. Andraste's set up, so it seems kind of weird. I think the Divine Shield's probably just... Oh, it's the uh, the Death Rattles on the um, 
yeah, those death rattles there. Unfortunately, if we hit the one one, oh yeah, there's a tie. Nice. Fort I forgot to mention that. Fourteen percent chance to tie. So Steffi pulls out the tie. Doesn't have enough mana to Oh, she ops okay, very good. Very good. I didn't think she had enough mana to do uh bump up and uh and grab the the bomb. Ooh, those are some on four. I think you take the faceless here. Uh, yeah, that's Millhouse's. Um, so the uh, minions cost two, um, and rerolling costs two. So it's your minions cost one less, your reroll costs one more, and your tavern up costs one more. Gotcha. So um, she was able to actually save. So that's why Millhouse really likes when demons and pirates are in. Um, especially with Millhouse, if you can get uh, Captain Husker, who gives you a gold for buying a pirate. Okay. So if you buy one pirate for two gold, and you get one gold back. Um, so if you can get two of those down, or even a golden, you're literally gaining a gold because you're buying it for two, getting two gold, and then you can sell it back for one. <laughs> So uh, it's a nice little uh, way to do that there. Um, don't know if we'll see that this game might be a little bit too late. And uh, Blues and about to put, put Steffi back in her place. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> caster versus caster again. He says, I remember what you did to me. Yeah. So next turn, we'll pop over to whoever you're spectating, which is... Andrasti. Andrasti, okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think Steffi's in a tough position. She's been kind of coasting on Milhouse's just general power um, early. And she's going to go for another triple here and really pray that she can find a direction at this point in time. There's some... Mithrax, yeah, okay. Mythrax with a little bit of flavor. Yeah, I'm going to definitely be able to. We're going to get uh, plus one, plus two. And so we're going to get one, two, three. So we're going to get a plus three, plus six. And there's a jug. We lack jugs. Yep. And an Argus Defender, I would think, would be a. Or more um, jugs. Or you keep doing the jug thing. Yeah, jugs are just really good because I think we want to end on this arm of the Empire. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think you want to do it on your... Yeah, I was going to say, your Mithrax is going to get extremely large, and now you've got the Arm of the Empire, which is just going to buff these guys up plus two, and they permanently keep that plus two. As the card clearly states. Yes. <laughs> for for Ron that doesn't read, it's it's on the card, dude. It's on the card, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Ron. All right. 61% chance here, according to HSR, with 19% um, chance to tie or lose. Yeah, this Arm of the Empire is putting in a lot of work here. Uh, Going to be able to buff up these taunts and really seal the deal here for oh, Steffi. Yeah. So she beats on Jump Float. Okay. Yeah. She found her direction, and uh, Mythrax with a, a little bit of menagerie spiced in there. So it's a, it's a really good direction for her right now. So we are jumping over to Andrasti. Yeah, so Andrasti is kind of doing a menagerie build as well. It kind of seems the spice of life right now. He, unfortunately, has three pairs and is bagging, I think, for a triple. Uh, and just can't find it right now. Uh, another individual possibly looking for a direction in this game. A uh, double sell on the... Ooh, Poison is very nice. Especially on George. Uh, that's just... Uh, basically kill a minion for free. <laughs> Twice, sometime. Like, that, that's, that's what that does. That's what it all does. And uh, another primordial 
is an interesting pick, especially with the old Merc guy there. I do like the freeze. All right, we are about to run into uh, Steffi again. We just left. <laughs> um, see how these divine shields hit? It's going to be a difficult way. So far, not getting the best divine shields. Actually, having the Murloc that far behind is a bit... Awkward. Big bomb coming out, taking care of business. Yeah. Ooh. It was close. Yep. But there's a Very cigar close. in there somewhere. Wow. I'm uh, spectating fire emblems right now. He just got popped and down to two, yeah. He is down Oof. into the dirt with two. Yeah, so uh, maybe a tight one there. Uh, Andrasti, I might just go for the Poison Murloc build, which isn't unheard of on George. Uh, you basically just make Murlocs, give them Divine Shield, and make them poisonous. Um, you can typically get into top four with it, but with no direction at the moment, it's a very difficult decision what Andrasi wants to do. Uh, Who is he going up against here? Is he going up against Jump Float? He is. So so there's some teammate. Yeah, Squawking teammate be teammate. Uh, honestly, probably trying to figure out what they're going to do to each other. I would expect to hold this deflecto. Oh, okay. We're just disrespecting our teammates. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> Just gonna disrespect your teammate like that. Um, yeah, I expect to see one of these two guys go out here. Oh, man. And I expect, I think it's gonna be Jump Float taking the L here. I think these Divine Shields are gonna be a little bit too much. It's a very good value trade. Yeah, there's another one. More Divine Shield's going to be popping out. <clears throat> There's got a hope. Oh, don't pop that. Oh, no. <coughs> Same amount of damage. And, oh, he survives at four health. Whew. Nobody going out there. But let's let's call it here. From bottom to top, we've got two health, two health, four health, four health, <laughs> twelve health. Nobody wanted to die last turn, so nobody here we are is on dying. Turn Eleven. This is where the standings get extremely interesting. Okay. Because, um, Toxin is really nice. Yeah, Indrasi has got a really decent build going on right now. Going to be able to like reset the selfless hero buffs as well. Yeah, um, this, uh, sorry, I was going to say, this is where the ties get really interesting because, I mean, we're about to see possibly a three-way tie for 8th, 7th, and 6th. Yeah. So whoever's in 8th is super happy, but whoever's in in 5th or in 6th in is not happy because they actually have to share down with the rest of the oh, class, right? So. Okay. Um, the points actually are kind of like pooled together and the, and the, and the average of them all is taken across the people. So if you're a lower on that, you're a bit happier. Wow. Gets the divine shield popped on the two poison murlocs. I don't think this will be a lethal we just need to make sure this junk bot hits something or something hits the junk bot there we go it's definitely not a lethal here and wow actually pulls the wind with those death rattles man i'm telling you microbot death rattles knocks more people out than not <laughs> so, all right what do we see here we got uh, fire emblems going out and 
Silas, whoever Silas was, which was riots. So it's riots. Yeah. So an eighth and a seventh there. So this like better for fire emblems. Obviously, an eighth is not where you want to be, but uh, does share the tied points with riots. So um, a little bit more points than he would naturally be getting. Yeah. So I'm just gonna queue up. Um... Wow. Gonna queue up. Let's say no blue jay there, probably. He's on yeah. second. Yeah. All right. We'll do blue jay. You say blue jay, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. So the next two turns, we'll jump over to blue jay. Actually, I think Andrasse and blue jay are about to go at it. Yep. Wow. Blue jay's board is very nice. Ooh, biggins. Yeah, that's a thick board. Um, but it yeah. can be as thick as it wants to be, as <laughs> as chat and everyone at home will see. Uh poison murlocs with divine shields kind of just do really well with that. Yep. Yeah. Oh my, that is a board and I would freeze it. Oh my holy god. <laughs> yeah. That is not fair. No. Sir. Yeah. Sir, Watch that is this. illegal. A 6-4 just took out a 39-164. Yeah. Um, poison Murlocs are things. They get poisonous dangly bits. So, I mean, these trades are going so well. Look at this. That is insane. And still pushing a ton of damage. 15 damage. Blue Jays got to regroup. We did lose two more. Uh, Jump Float and Steffi being knocked out, tying for sixth and fifth. So we do have a top four in Blue Sombrero, Blue Jay, Andraste, and Lemur. So Lemur and Andraste um, fighting their way back into top four. Uh, Sombrero uh, coming back. Uh, as well as um, Blue Jay fighting his way back into the top four after last match. All right. Well, discover two Murlocs. <clears throat> okay. So Blue at two, See Blue Jay at uh... seven, Andrasti at 12 with Loomer at... At 23. Yeah, he's uh, not too sure. It's got the rag build, and last time we saw, it was that mech build again. So Lemur getting very comfy with mechs, which, I mean, I said earlier, it is it is a harder one to win with, but um, Lemur making it look extremely easy. We're just going to... I wonder if we're holding the Sears mm. for if we can find a brand or not. All right. Oh, mm -hmm. that is a big cleave. It does hit the poison, so down goes the big reaver. Vine shields are going to start getting ripped off by these plants. There we go, right down the middle. Call it a tie. Yep, and then Blue Jay is surviving for another day by defeating Lemur there with 18 damage to 23. I mean, this is wow. It's down to the wire of wires here, people. Yeah, this is pretty much as close as you could want for a for a finals in this right now. So yep, we're just gonna skip on over to. Blue my, Jay. My view right now, which is Blue Jay. So <clears throat> the good thing for Blue Jay is they actually get to dodge Andrasti, <laughs> which I think Andrasti is the only person beating Blue Jay at the moment. Okay. Um, simply because of the Divine Shield poison. I literally don't think there's anybody else in this game that is going to be able to beat a 6262. It's just not something that happens very often. <laughs> it's 62-292, bro. 
Two ninety two. Sorry, yeah, he's sorry. He's three oh seven. Three oh seven. By the way, <laughs> yeah. um, he's still going. Why not? One more. You th- three twenty five. It's just yeah. Um, get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't see if like I don't think the poisonous in the world is going to help you because no. even if you take out that three hundred health. Uh, Minion, there is still a like a fifty fifty genie and a forty seven forty seven mini rag, so it's going to be a extremely uphill battle. Thirty. We do have two poisons though. Wow, thirty five percent for for Blue Jay to escape Blue Sombreros. Yeah, and it's that divine shield poison. Uh, it's going to be wreaking havoc. So. And it still survives. Oh. So oh. there it is. Night, night. The only way is if these. You got to hit the one one. All right, we do <gasps> get a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Jay lives another they day. They are all still alive, dude. This is maddening. This is madness. So who are you spectating right now? Uh, I am getting in on Lemur right now. Okay. Uh, who just tied, somehow tied, <laughs> with Vindrosti. <laughs> um, so uh, you're actually going to see Blue Jay going into Andrasti. And as I was saying earlier, I think this spells disaster for Blue Jay. Um, I just don't see, unless Andrasti has dramatically changed the board now i will point out one card in the hand right now and that is ghoul 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 will basically pop all those divine yeah shields. so if Andrasti still has the selfless it's going to i guess pretty much be null and void but if he doesn't that is kind of a way that Blue Jay is going to be able to win this because the genies can then summon the the death rattles, which could easily win the game for him. Right. He's deciding if he wants to put the selfless in over I, something, but I, I you I got to put that yeah. ghoul. I was just going to say, I think the ghoul is, is too important right now. All right. Let's see if anything... Thirty-seven points. Uh, yeah. See if this ghoul gets hit first. It does not. There goes the big boy. Oh, that wasn't poisoned. Oh, he oh. got so lucky. <laughs> the four oh six is just there. It oh goes. my god! A one one just <laughs> murdered him. We got another tie. There's another tie. I can't believe You can't this. be serious, man. We All okay. right. Well, somebody died. So somebody died. <laughs> Lumer, Lemur passed away on the fourth. Yeah. Fourth. fourth I mean, we might as well stay on Blue Jay for this run, man. Mm. The way that it's looking, yeah. I don't know. Because uh, Lemur, he's got the ghost coming in. Uh, I'm gonna hop back on Andrasti here, as Lemur was just kicked out. Okay. And then I'll flip over to Andrasti. As soon yeah. As you're in, once you let me yeah, know. Yeah, I am there. Yeah, okay, I will flip over. All right, so Androsti is going to be coming in against Blue Sombrero here. Um, Sombrero had I don't remember Sombrero's board. Uh, I believe. Yeah, I don't think I remember Sombrero's board. Um, definitely it was mixed minions. Uh, like with oh, it was the Mythrax with um. With some big boys, so we'll see if uh, if Sombrero can can throw a ghoul in the mix just like Blue Jay did. Let me get another triple here. Maybe looking for an Amalgadon. Poisoned everything again. All the poison. Aliza is pretty good. 
All right, we're into it. Let's see. This has been a, I think we've fought two, three or four ties here. Easy. Yeah. Probably All right, more. this one should be a bit more Andrasti favored. Yeah, that uh, that taunt Murloc's actually helping. The reset on these divine shields. Yeah, even with these uh, bots popping, there goes the 108, 108 gold grubber. And Blue Sombrero is going to be sent home in third place. Okay. <clears throat> and we got Blue Jay beating up on Kalthasad. So Just giving him the business. Yeah. How many I... to the face? A short, stocky 26 to the face. Just a crisp 2-6. So, Blue Sombrero versus Andrasti. Yeah, I mean, I do see on Blue Jay's board, they got rid of that ghoul. So he needs to have the cognizant of mind to get the ghoul back. Um, I do see a 100-100 little rag, so that that, that keep, might be a big rag at this point. Keeping it 100. Um, he's literally hard rolling for ghoul right now. And got um, it. Got it, yeah. Wow, that's... So strong. That is a ninety-one six six nine. Nice. Sneed. Yeah, I mean, just mm -hmm. just really using it for um for fodder for for a goal at this point. Yep. Yeah, you got to pull that ghoul down. There you go. I was gonna say, holy crap. Freaking yeah, out. I think just looking for any more buffs they could possibly find because this selfless and this ghoul are definitely going in. Um, Google going to be able to pop the selfless and give a divine shield over to Blue Jay, but we do know Indrasti does have the selfless hero of his own, so this is going to be a divine shield battle and wherever they land. And I mean, oh man, I think Indrasti still has it. Oh yeah, according to HS replay, eighty nine percent oh, chance. Yeah. There goes that big taunt. One poison taken down, but divine shields are going to be able to trade over pretty, pretty easily. Yep. There it is. That should be enough. Tavern tier five and eight, just enough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrasti with the big win. Blue Jay coming in second. So. All right. Quick recap. Yeah, so in Andrasti getting a first and a second there. Um really pulling through for uh Bob's bounty hunters and, and looking for that repeat mm -hmm. uh for those guys. All right. So very nice for those guys right there. Um we have any reports yet of scores? Wow, we've seen the scores, but just to review some of the uh, people if they came in late. So the second round, we had Fire Emblems go at eight spot, Riots at seven, Jump Float at six, uh, Stephanie at five with Lemur at four, Blue Sombrero at three, Blue Jay at two, and Andrasti at numero uno. So he got uh, t a two slot and a one slot tonight, which is really good for the team. Uh, jump float with a three and six. Uh, THL Loomer with a one and four a showing. Blue Sombrero with a four three. Steffi with a six five setup. Riots with eight seven. Um, then we got Fire Emblems at seven eight. And Blue Jay with a five and two. So. Yeah, and it's important to note that the scores that these players have. Uh, gained over the season don't matter i know they're on the page right now but this is basically is a wash and whatever you see right now is what you're going to see going forward so the top two teams after this week and next week of battling will actually face off against the top two in lemurs and concede your match and mm -hmm. that will be the finals cool all right.
any um, final words that we have for the Battlegrounds group? I mean, we uh, had a superstar uh, group as it is um, tonight. I mean, I was just amazed by all the uh, all the the numbers uh, that were shown, like the the regular season stats that were shown on on the screen um, on the website, I should say. So these aren't uh, these aren't beginners; they're seasoned veterans duking it out, trying to get points so they can move on and play off. Uh, Play against uh, the, the lemurs and or the, yeah the lemurs and and who's the other? Concede your match. Concede that, your so, match. Uh, there you go. Your mom, kid, and Agent PWE and those boys over there. The gang over there. Yep. Um. So I mean, yeah. This these points are insane. With Fire Emblem being the leader, like mm-hmm. he had eighty-seven points coming in and getting a seventh and eighth. It just goes to show how quickly your fortunes can change. Yep. So. All right, so that about does it for this Friday. Um, for Friday night, uh, just to actually add t- to the Battleground series. So we're going to have this Friday and Saturday, or Sunday, for Battlegrounds. And then the following Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sorry. Jeez, I got Saturday on the brain. So next Friday, Sunday, is also going to be the quarterfinals as well. So And then the winners out of those go and play another two weeks with uh, the, f- the final finals. So... All right, so are we ready with the uh, with our another legacy match? The players are ready. I got the uh, got the bands going. Yeah, uh, we are about to jump into the same teams, but different guys. Um, we're about to see Isocles from Chaos Theory take on Do You Even Tonk uh, Geranium Battle uh, or Natura Beast. So we just saw Kodomora and Rufski go at it. Uh, Kodomora got the three two victory there. And Notorious GHP actually taking a 3-1 win over Turtle. And Turtle falling to 0-3. Um, wow. Very uncharacteristic of Turtle. Like, extremely. Or people are caught on to Turtle's antics. And... Yeah, it's very, 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 very true. Ban, ban is priest and there's nothing to do. Although, That's right. Notorious banned is rogue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to the three seed, Isocles bringing Mage, Priest, Rogue, Warrior... And Geranium bringing Druid, Mage, Priest, and Warrior. Um, I guess we kind of had a little insider there with Kodamora saying, you know, they're kind of trying to target more of an aggro lineup. So possibly see a Priest ban here from Isocles and Geranium. I would just, you know, just from looking at it, I'm going to say a Mage ban. Okay. I do have bans, and I just told the players they could start. So yeah. when we do start, Isocles is going to be at the bottom of the screen or first to spectate for our viewers with uh, Geranium Battle at the top of the screen. So, uh, Isocles is a uh, rogue is banned, and okay. Geranium's Druid is banned. Interesting. So, maybe Isocles didn't bring the similar list that uh, his teammate Kodamora brought in the, you know, lower to the ground SI agent deal with an earlier board. Mm-hmm. Um, Isocles is not expecting his priest to go and maybe a little nervous of a of a clown druid because really clown druid into the warrior, into the priest is pretty scary. So yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I got to jack up yeah. the sound on my... So we're joining jack- Isocles right now. Damn and... my sound, baby. Natural Beast. Is over. Okay. So many different names. I know. It's <laughs> freaking me out. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Isocles has a start you want to see as a mage, and that's in Canner's Flow. And um, it turn, turns out my screen for prepping the op, I already had the uh, two heroes, uh, two classes already set up for for their opener. So you, That's why you're the best, right? I mean. At times. At That's times. why you do what you do. That's who I be, how I be. And uh, from Natura mm. Beast, uh, or Geranium Battle, a extremely strong opening hand as well. Um, I'd be interested to see if Isocles and Cantor's Flow uh, coins the Encanters here. Because um, really all you're doing next turn is Cram Session, and you don't like to do that for one. Um, there's anything I know about Isocles, he's currently my uh, hero teammate, and he is a very smart dude. Um, not taking anything away from Natura Beast, but Isocles has helped me a ton with the mage matchup, so I think he's extremely comfortable on this mage. OK. 
Okay, just uh, updating the players to the next uh, match that we got going on. So, mm -hmm. Rush Warrior doing Rush Warrior things. Parade leaders, awesome card. Yeah, and uh, gonna get really uh, the full value mm. is the Crab Rider. Yep. Um, Evolving could really betray you here. Double devolving. Yeah, if one doesn't work, you get the other, buddy. Just, yeah, give it a shot, give it a go. Um, might get... Ooh, Mizaki. Mizaki is a very sticky minion for later on, yeah. Sometimes sticking Mizaki in this mage is just game over. Yeah. Well, you saw if you saw GMs tonight today. There's not GMs, but the uh, yeah, it's oh, great. Holy moly! Baby. That was that was, that was the, the best, best outcome. <laughs> uh, the best outcome that Icicles could uh, could ever hope for. So yeah, I mean, there's a battle friend over there now, but at the same <clears throat> time, that's not a three four wind fury. No, and that makes everything better. Uh, probably Tent Trasher here. Yeah. Blood Boil Brute is just... You got a Demon down, so that technically costs three. Hmm. I yeah, think Blood Boil is too slow. Yeah, yeah. yeah Tent Trasher is good. <clears throat> yeah, just Temple of 5-5. Five five. Seems pretty nice. Make Isaacles deal with it and... Six to the face. Yeah, next one up is going to pop next turn, so Ooh. combustion. Okay. Um, he could. I mean, really, he could combustion ping coin devolving on the 5 5 and yep. put it to a two drop. Um, it's a lot of stuff to use, though, and using your coin there is a bit unfortunate. Um, could also just fall in hero, ping the 2 2, but that doesn't seem fun. Coin the devolving here as well, yeah. maybe? No, okay. Doesn't do it. I think it's, it just sets up a better combustion. Um, this fallen hero technically has to be cleared. Oh, man, Crick and hate low. Throw that man crick down. Well, you can throw both yeah. like the bumper car and the man crick, so. You might want a bumper car and then actually play one more, but yeah, no, just clean use of minions and a 3-4 is extremely strong on board. Mm. One more turn. If Isocles makes it, <laughs> he's facing 15 on the board right now. Yeah, just can't, can't just coin and flame strike, but can devolving mess up. Yeah, I mean, combustion does clear the bumper, the elven, and the ganar, and then you can just devolving five five and the three four, and you know, hope for not the best. <laughs> I like you know how, how I mean? the octaves just... were just going up and up and up. Yeah, it's just like it's it's a sad play because you're like pretty oh. much still okay. Wow. Oh, oh. oh uh, e, ooh, ah. Mm. So, so the good is... thing is we don't run a lot of spells. <laughs> the bad thing is that's got wind fury. Um. <laughs> But if you're Isocles, you're going, uh, crap. So if he does have a spell, get your yeah. going to be putting in some, some work. At most, mm. it's two mana. Whoa, Whoa Ralgor. Ralgor. Interesting. Okay, spicy. Um, I'm interested in the ping from Isocles. I actually don't, I know, I actually don't know why he did it. Um, I guess it's because he knows the only spell probably run 
is conditioning, which would buff that to a five health, mm -hmm. and flank strike guarantees the clear. But if a shield of honor came out there, um, that would have been very bad. Very bad indeed. Very bad. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a straightforward turn. What do you mean? What do you What do you have to do? <laughs> Oh, you double fireball yourself. Yeah, yeah that's right. That, that's easy win. Yeah, that's that's how you get those dubs. So Ice Glees is going for the Flame Strike. I mean, we're just two turns Ooh. away from and <laughs> and an ogre. Not you. This is a very this list was meant to destroy Mage. I think so. Yeah, or at least disrupt it. Especially yeah. with that rattle gore kicking in. Yeah, you don't see ogres or rattle gores in right. this style very often. Um, and I mean, we're a sword eater away from lethal here. Oh, just, <laughs> just yeah, gonna take it just, anyway. Just said, you know what? Forget about it. It's you. It's on you, buddy. Sometimes you just you gotta take the licks and, and move on with uh to the next one. Okay. Match two with the warrior win. Specialized warrior win. Yeah, that um was really interesting for Geranium to bring uh a tutor. Like I mean polymorph is gone. Uh other than, I guess, I suppose, devolving missiles. But really, if Rattlegore gets low enough and it's just like a 5-5 five, five or a 4-4 four, four, and a devolving hits it, you're kind of happier, I suppose. You asked for it. So, pretty pretty cool bring. So, yeah, Mage oh. versus Mage. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a game of flow, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, uh, I honestly even think you just throw your entire hand away and you just want flow, even the refreshing spring water. I, I don't think you want to be drawing expensive cards. Uh, it's flow or bust, really. Go with the flow or don't. Yeah, pretty much. But if you don't, you probably don't win the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost so guaranteed. drew his cards correctly uh, after the mulligan there. Both did throw all of them back um, and uh, unfortunately or I guess fortunately for Isocles he is rewarded alright I'm just going to be away from the microphone for a quick sec no problem um, so got a ruined orn pickup probably going to look for a flow of his own will he find it no a second Apexis blast or a ring toss ring toss is interesting, but Apex's Blast is just more burn. Ruined Orb again, so basically just fire that off, see what we can dig for. Fireball. More burn. Burn is good. Alright, kind of a little back and forth pinging here. Refreshing Spring Water picked up for Nichira Beast. Uh, Arcane Intellect gonna draw him up to uh nine cards so we're, we're right at the cusp there and second fireball picked up for Isocles so um, a bit of an awkward turn just gonna fire this fireball at face and uh, has the Mask of Cthulhu in hand as well so if the True Beast doesn't play anything or a minion soon um, that's a seven mana pyroblast so decisions from Natura Beast, that Springwater pickup is pretty awkward. I'm assuming an Apexis Blast will come out here. Yeah. And Thresher. Um, so Thresher's pretty nice. I would assume to see like a Fireball Brain Freeze Brain Freeze possibly? Could just Combustion brain freeze. Just continuously poking each other down. If we get a font of power and get the uh, 10 10, 
Uh, I think someone's going to be hitting for a lot. So refreshing spring water finally comes out. Still no Encantress flow for Nachira Bees. Second Apexis Blast going to come down. And hey, he helped Kodamora last turn in his mage matchup. Can it do the same for <laughs> Nachira Beast on the flip side? Oh, man. Uh, Mazaki picked up again. So I like Ring Tongue here with the frame, Brain Freeze because you can actually just continuously free, well, the ping, but... If he's pinging, he's using two mana that's not spells, so. The craziness and, of mage. Yeah, and I mean, that Earth Alley is not only great for this, it's just also awkward into a Mask of Cthune turn for Isocles. Ruined Ord pickup. So still no Encanter's Flow for Natura Beast. Icicle has hit his, and we have seen the refreshing Spring Water come out for Natura Beast. So uh, about five cards ahead in the deck right now. So um, pretty unfortunate that these uh, cards are on the bottom. I'm always... So what do you think about Solarian in these decks? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I've seen on stream today that it was uh, beneficial, especially in the like in the later stages of the game where the man is like under 14. Seems to help, <laughs> obviously, but it also hinders. So by not getting the spells you want or you, you mill all your cards you need or whatever, so. Yeah, well, I mean, Icicles has a decision of his own, could get a Solarian <laughs> himself. Yeah. It's just, it's different because the Chira Beast has played uh, one Apexis uh, randomly generated and one from the deck. So he yeah. really only has one more to disrupt him, where Icicles hasn't drawn either of them. Gosh. So, like as you're saying, there's a lot more... Um, there, uh, Geomancer Combustion cleans this up very nicely and double trade into the prime or just ping. Right, we have mana when you have mana, you can ping. You can, not if you have one, though, <laughs> unless you're playing even. Yes, even mage, <laughs> even mage, even mage can get there. So here All we are. right. Mask of Cthulhu, putting in work. I mean, that's that's lethal. Yep. Unless there's <laughs> some magical a double Mazaki. <laughs> Do it, Ice um, Face. Double Mazaki. Do it. Ethereal Figure. Conjurer could get Counterspell, and then you're alive. Yeah, I double. think that's what you have to take. Uh, I think he's also was looking at the A win fireball. That's eight. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Isocles, there is going to be double fireball coming back towards him. Um, Geranium hitting him with a well played. And Isocles seeing two fireballs. So that's very well played by uh, Geranium there. Yeah. Nice patience. No. Yep. No flow and seemingly behind, but I think the biggest issue for Isocles in that matchup was uh, Geranium was able to uh, find his Apexis Blasts. So Isocles not only had to, you know, take the five face damage, he also had to face um, the minions that came afterwards and deal with those. So, one last ditch effort. Icicle's bringing this mage back out. And uh, Natura Beast bringing out that remaining priest. Yeah, and I was just glad that it's not a priest mirror because I saw how that goes. So. Yeah, um, not fun. <laughs> it's forever. So... It's not... <laughs> I mean, this matchup's kind of the same because as mage, you need to save your burn. 
And as priest, you just don't do anything until they use their burn. <laughs> so, like, there's no interaction on the board for priest. And then there's also really no interaction from the mage until they want to start firing their stuff off. Right. So, might be a bit of a... There it is. Hey, there Proper there etiquette is. there. Thank you, thank you. Man of culture. And uh, Isocles gives him a hero power back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Vicious Scorpid. Vicious Scorpid. I think venomous probably scorpid, Venomous. Yeah, you know what? A Vicious Venomous one. I agree with you. Started with it. Um... Rive in the Shadows? Depends if we're running uh, uh, Velweaver, I guess. Selic? Yeah, Gift of Luminance might be. Uh, yeah. And uh, um, the other way. We do have Kazakus in hand as well, um, which is pretty spicy. There's the flow. Let's go. Go with the flow, Isocles. Go with the flow, the Man of the people. Now, like, really important to note that Isocles didn't draw any of his burn yet, and he's so he's able to discount all of the burn in his deck right now. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have a Divine Shield Summon a copy. Okay. That is so an that's interesting one. Going to be very sticky. Ooh, Rune Orb. Takes care of that one three if you need to. Full clear. Do it. Discover a spell. So what spell do we need? Fireball. Ball. Silly question. <laughs> I always when I first when the expansion first dropped, and people were saying that uh, ruined orb was so good. I thought they were saying ruined yeah. orb. And I was like, what card are they talking about? <laughs> I don't see it. Um, <gasps> to my knowledge, ooh, second encounters flow. Throw but that. do you have the time? I think you do. Um, combustion. Brain freeze. Just a lot of stuff. And a lot of reactive spells yeah. as well, yeah. Well, good way to clear out the boards. Just have Mr. Sank Sank. Interesting turn. Yeah, I think prime palm rating. Apo's good, but I honestly think it's renew in this case. Powerwood Feast. Saves your guy from a fireball. Yeah. And enables but, you to throw a seven downfield. So. Yeah. Nope. Does a lot of renew. One. Yep. Just for literally the only way that the priest loses is they run out of healing, right? Um, and just gonna up pow. Pow. Seven down face anyway. He liked what he heard. Uh, Brain Freeze is gonna, just going to make that stop in its tracks. <laughs> Hello, sir. No, sir. Yeah. No more attacking for you. Zero mana ruined. Devolving. devolving is really good. So, yeah, we just solo target that Golem, and it becomes a two drop. Hey, Devolving. More. Man. Use the one mana one. Uh, Yeah, because you don't have a... Uh, are these corrupted yet? No, they're not. So, oh. Yeah, that's extremely nice. With mana to burn and another wing portal, knowing that priest has spells, so spells yeah. do things. So I think we're gonna have to see a ring toss soon, um, corrupted or not, and possibly have to go for a. Um... Hey, Zorelia, hey. um, rigged fair game. Because right. really, 
Uh, Priest doesn't have a board. It's probably never going to have a board again, or if it does, it's not going to be for a while. And it's Hysteria. never going to hit you in the face. Yeah. Oh, Holy Nova or Idol? Idol. You're at two A. Even yeah, because you're not creating. I was going to say Psychic Split would be good too, but yeah, you've seen the one devolving. I mean, you we do we know this is here. Um, this is just a ten ten next turn, no matter what you get. The unfortunate part is that if you do pull something a blow, then it's it's even worse. It's a two mana fireball and a font of power. Let's see what we get. Mozaki, baby. No. Mordesh, Fire Eye, Water Ellie, and Imprisoned Phoenix. Yeah, that's, um, pretty, that's pretty good to throw those two down. Yeah. Yeah, Phoenix in two turns is a ton of damage, especially when we can find this third fireball mm -hmm. um, in time. We can push a lot of damage. We can push, will it be 18 plus 6, so 24 damage out of fireballs? That's a lot of damage. Yeah, so Natura on the turn. I mean, we, we picked this idol Yashiraj for a reason. And then slam it, see what we get. Okay, an 8-8. Eight, eight. It's going to be a 5-drop. Ooh. Oh, Apex's Blast. All right, so we are very close to just lethaling uh, next turn. So we devolve and see what happens. We can brain freeze whatever comes out. We hit for 27. I think you're looking to one turn kill. Oh, God. That's wow. Upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> That's upsetting. Yeah. Wow. Finally gets those ring tosses corrupted, though. So. Yep. I think that was the backup plan anyway. Just. Yeah. So we don't have, we do have the mana next turn, and we've got 12, we've got 17 plus 6, so we've got 23, 26 next turn with the Water Ellie attack. So we're still just short. I wonder if we just still slow play it. I mean, once this Phoenix pops, I think we have to, it's a very tough decision. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because when the Phoenix pops, the two spell damage is gone. Yeah. Essentially, because Natura Beast is never letting that live. Um, but at the same time, if you just use all of that burn, the Priest is just going to heal it back up. Primordial Protector going to draw Fortitude. Ooh. That's oh, a low oh, roll, oh. but you do have... Fortitude. I don't see why you don't. Yeah. Oh, Blackwing be good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even mind the hothead just to absorb some damage. Yeah. Oh. What do oh. We got? Two, four, uh, six, seven, eight. I don't think we're there. Nope. Yeah. Fourteen and eight is yeah. We're still not enough. There's no rushes at five, right? 16. No. Or charges at five? Charge is pretty much gone. Yeah. Um, I think you get a ring here, unfortunately. Man, I'm thinking you have to double Apexus to eight, the eight six. Or the eight ten. Ooh. Oh, no That's way. That's timely. <laughs> what is with ogres in this matchup? <laughs> Dude, Chaos Theory and Tonk have oh. an ogre affinity. So he is going to go with half and half kind of. Yeah. Counterspell. Counterspell. Most likely and rigged fair game, I would assume. Yep. yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, called it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if Natura wants to play cards here, which he clearly does, and he's playing more of a spell priest. He's literally going to flood the board with tutus. 
Here we go. Soul mirror for the... I'd be curious. So I've seen the, the, the up, Apo your opponent to to gain the health on the soul mirror. I wonder if that was ever the case. And then you can actually death the ogre on the other side. Okay. Hysteria. Hysteria. The ogre. You're hoping it hits 10 10. Wow. Wow. Okay. That. Oh. Talk about a rigged fair game. And a timely devolving at this moment. Yeah. Um. We still don't have lethal. Nope. Nope. We've got 14 and 5 is 19 damage. Um. Yeah, that ogre is. I don't think it's the worst. I still think you might devolving. I, I think you devolve and then you react after that. See what... the two. Yeah, kill the kill the phoenix. Yeah, and then take this the chance. Is... Yeah. Oh, well, combustion. Okay. Like, make sure that dies. Because you can ping. Yeah, you ping the Phoenix, trade the taunt, and then you devolving. You guarantee this uh, Lyrock goes to a um, a 5-drop. And then you can Apexis it, I suppose, because they're not really living past that. Uh, or you could just straight up kill it. Oh, are we going to mask? Yo, what? Woo! Woo! -hoo -hoo. Spicy. Okay. Wow. Do you get heal? If you get heal. Yes, sir. I have heal. Devouring plague. Yeah. Uh, more heal, I suppose. Draconic or... studies is not going to do it, but I think... Yeah, wave is... I think devouring plague might be a best... Yeah, these are all decent options. Uh, Draconic gives you a little more value. Plague is obviously the heal that you've been looking for. Um, and Wave is, I mean, in, in an indirect heal. Auspicious um, spirits. So hard to corrupt, but we do have the runaway in our hand. Yeah. Which Just is jam that. Hope for the best. What did you pick up? Forced, focused will. Yeah. Silence give plus three health. Oh, and pings a 2-2. Two -two. The There's the card. All right. Um, so what do you got for... Ring, ring toss first, or do you just want a fireball? I think you're always trading the wand maker and then going into devolving. The question is, you still have a font of power in your deck. Do you care about this 1-1 one, one buff? I don't think you really do. Nope. Um, and then... Okay. Uh, first, there's a mask. There's a cram sesh. One, two, three. Let's see what our six drop is. Wow, very understated six drop. It's to uh, live. Uh, mirror entity be okay. Jeez Louise, portal and entity. You are <laughs> basically using the whole end of the rope there. <laughs> um, Utilizing the rope wisely. Ooh, the rolled on the four. Yeah, that is a, a, an unfortunate little buff, or I guess nerf from a few a few uh, expansions ago. Um, when they nerfed that card from three mana to four mana. Here's the auspicious and e master. Oh, a, that is a good no. card. 
when you have minions. All right. Well, he gets a free mage minion, I guess. <laughs> what do we get? Oh my goodness. Okay. Are you camping? How many? <laughs> we still need seven <laughs> pigs. Yeah. You know what? Caldera is about to get us halfway there. <laughs> is it ever? Uh, hey, we've I, got. We got two gold what? ones. Here we go. What? What is even happening? Stuff, things. He's got to use his ping a lot more, obviously, but it's not the game plan. Oh. It's not, but it might be now. This is ten. Da These are two pyroblasts. I mean, you're you're ten. You're so far away from that. That's right, gonna get us a man crick. That's probably just gonna get killed. Um, there's a flesh golem in the hand of Natura Beast, and slowly but surely, this game is getting. Further and further away from Isocles. Um, Maybe. Two cards left in the deck. He's Both got, masks gone. He's got five pings left, dude. Five. Can he make five. it? Five. Count it. Um, possibly has another. So the other cards are, I'm, I'm assuming, a primordial and a refreshing spring water in the deck. Um, for refreshing spring water is not what you want to see, and it's what we see. And it's cheaper in Chirpy's <laughs> hand. <laughs> um, uh, Isocles, tis not your night, sir. I think that's it. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the last card is a Primordial Study. And... Yeah, just dropping 11-11. But, I mean, we're facing down... Uh, 17. 17 plus 3 from hand with the fonts you get the is another 20 power word for fortitude yeah it gives you 3 so we're at 20 oh man yeah it doesn't really matter what you give it to just make, make a minion sticky we're going to draw and apotheosis would be lethal here ooh Leave that alone. Just go ahead and go. Go face. Because nothing else is happening the other way. Well, the thing is, if he if he does that, we're down to 16, and you're dead to, I guess, like, triple fireball nonsense. Um, One Thief one is thief. a card. And a good one. And Counterspell <laughs> is... Declutus, he says. Get out of here. <laughs> get out of this place. Get out of here. Yeah, just gonna make sure he doesn't die. Heal up all the way. Clear off that 11-11 and pretty much take Isocles' chances. Last card is, yes, that Primordial Studies A indeed. Zero cost primordial Studies. And there's the Counterspell. And oh, Isocles is gonna probably find the own lethal. He did find his lethal. Yeah, that is a rough ping. 3 0. Oh, I he mean, should have pinged. Oh, he should have. I mean, you want the overkill, right? I suppose. Wow, unfortunate oh. mage just not coming through for Isocles there. Nope. All right, so we can sneak in a. a uh... Yeah, we've got a little bit of time here. Seems like we've caught ourselves up. See if I can find them. There we go. Got time for a quick interview. With that, um, so Kodomora took a 3 2, um, not yet shown, notorious. So that is eight points for Chaos, and that should be four, so five. Um, so it should be an 8-5 game, Chaos Theory, uh, Do You Even Tonk? Um, so it's pretty much going to come down to Risen and Canoe with Heat Shock subbing in into Always Just in Time. There he is, the winner of the evening, the 3-0 champ. How's it going, man? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> my heart was in my chest that entire, <laughs> that entire match. Oh my God! We were just hoping um, for a, a not a priest versus priest matchup. So, but <laughs> I was I was really hoping for that. Yeah, I I teched my priest <laughs> to be more 
uh, against the uh, more against the mage, more against the um, the warrior, because I knew that I was going to fight those two. Uh, I was I was definitely on the back foot with the classes that were left over, but uh, like uh, basically definitely I think out out prepped me in the in the class picks. But uh, then I think I just happened to happened to figure out like today I thought okay, he's going to ban my druid, and because of that, I should probably ban his rogue. He's probably going to bring poison rogue, and oh my god. Sorry, I'm just, I'm really... It's okay, man. Oh, I'm yeah, no, that's off. fine. Take a quick breath here. Yeah, he, um, he had you close on the, on that last game, the mage priest. When the phoenix popped, he had 26 in hand, and you were at a healthy 30. Um, so he was a mask or not even a mask. It was, uh, yeah, double fireball and, and a Pexus in hand, um, with the Phoenix popping. So you definitely knew the outs there. You, you kept healthy boards. And I mean, the soul mirror turn probably is what turned the tide officially for you. Um, being able to get yourself an ogre and just to stick the healthy, uh, life steal was was really i think what turned the tide there he had a lot of cards and eventually just had to use all of his his uh his issues or his issues his uh, resources i actually think um i mean the soul mirror was was really good but i actually think the the best thing that turn was the hysteria um the hysteria oh, yeah. on the on his ogre killing his very his lucky two one <laughs> yeah uh with the spell damage and giving you life steal like yeah that was uh, I was just really lucky there. Um, but, oh man, uh, I suppose played really, really well. There's a reason why he's he's 99 on ranked ladder right now in the top 100. Yeah, and I mean, you he definitely had faith in that mage. I think he, he thinks very highly of that deck and um, but it also goes to show your your prowess is you actually beat the mirror not having drawn flow. Um, so I, I think the Apexus Blast really pulled out the game for you there, but I mean, he had the flow, which is typically a GG in a mirror when the other mage gets the discounts, but you, you found the ways to get there, um, quite successfully. So, uh, definitely hats off to you for that one. Yeah. I, I feel a little bad that the, uh, the RNG was just like really heavily in my favor, uh, that game, but yeah, I just, I kept the, I kept the burn and then all the burn went where it needed to go so yeah so that uh that game uh we just saw kodamora and ruski go at it uh, notorious and turtle uh just went at it and so you have uh pulled tonk back into you know a fighting chance this week with that 3-0 sweep um do you think Justin and Canoe can get it done for you guys here? Because you and Chaos Theory are are pretty much neck and neck coming into week three here. So you think your boys can pull through the week? Oh, man. I mean, I, I definitely have faith in my boys. Um, Justin uh, has just finished his finals. Like, he is, he is just now getting free. So uh, I'm sure he's going to put in tons of prep work. Uh, Heat Shock is no slouch, though. He's, uh, so uh, I'm not even... Not even you know gonna state like Justin's going to win. I think it could go either way, but I I believe in Justin. Um, and then uh, Kanu versus Risen. Oh my God, Risen is such a such a nutty four seed. But he is. Yeah, I I, I want Kanu to prove that he's the nuttier four seed. <laughs> I know it's uh, it's well. I mean it, it's good. You're going up to a, a three and zero oh now. Um, just not really to the match or anything, but uh, d- your teammate Turtle, very, very uncharacteristic on 0 and 3. Do you think you're moving up to the two seed anytime soon? Um, I really don't want to move up to the two seed <laughs> because that means that Turtle is going to keep losing. But uh, especially with my with my bonus, my bonuses for being in my first ten matches, I believe I think there might not be much of a, a choice in the matter um, <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah like I, I turtle i really want him to uh to to get the the free time like he's he's in so many different series right now and uh you know he can he can definitely pull it back together 
Yeah, and the way that the THL works right now, a lot of people are 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 finding ways to. I, I'm not going to say abuse uh, PR because it's not like the wild stuff were, but people are definitely learning ways to manipulate it uh, to their advantage. And really, um, I mean, third seeds can look like two seeds or one seeds right now, right? I mean, um, it's crazy. If you look at, you know, like F2L, for instance, uh, Rebob was a four seed last week. So it's... Uh, yellow Darren a five. <clears throat> yeah, Yellow Darren a five. So, I mean, I'm the five now for that. But uh, <laughs> that's a hero. Sorry, never mind. But uh, still, it's more... <laughs> Legacy is looking more and more like pro for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, lots of oh, high yeah. caliber uh, Gordon, speaking of, of you, you uh, were talking earlier in Ruski's match about how uh, you were in the classic tournament knocked half line. He did mention that you fought and beat me to get there. Just to mention how you lost the scene. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I didn't want to be ungraceful and be like, yeah, I beat this guy. No, I'm not like that, man. <laughs> we had a good we had a good slot. We had a good fight, man. That was uh yeah, oh, that was great. I'm actually. Are you playing in the Sunday tournament? Um, I was. Uh, I was just really focusing on this. So uh, yeah, if there's still signups available, I might. Um, I do not know. But... It's only 32, 32 people first come first serve. So <laughs> you definitely could get in yeah. there. You have to check I'll it be out. Looking into it. Well, congrats on the win tonight. Um, gets a super hard opponent with the with Isocles there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, duped your way through, and congrats to you and your team. I would, uh, I would not be surprised to face Isaac in playoffs. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I don't think yeah. that's the end of that series <laughs> no. for sure. I think he's going to come back yeah. with a vengeance on you for for sweeping his mage. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, man. You have yourself a, a great night, and we're on to the next match. On to some Thank you. wild. You too. Yeah, we're on to some wild stuff. So we currently have uh, some bans already in. So um, Snake Fods has banned uh, an awful artist. Jesus, it's going to be tongue trick. <laughs> Paladin. An awful artist banned uh, Warlock of Snake Fods. So mm-hmm. um, I didn't put the, the decks up. because I'm That's not... all right. Let's snap these up real quick. So. Um... Coming out for Snake Fods, who is on Fell Me, I'm a Wreck. Um, <laughs> that's a yep. interesting name. Um, we got the uh, Secret Mage. You've got the Aggro, I suppose. The No, that's the Hand Buff, Pally. Yep. Um, you've got the uh, Mill Rogue. Hey, look at that. Um, and you've got the uh, Q Block. Which is very nice, and is off the corruptor. Those are some decks I haven't seen in a while, and now I'm not a wild person at, by any means. Um, but I definitely know that I think Mill Rogue wasn't too high up. I have seen Buff Paladin has been coming out pretty strong. I think Bodybuilder HS had a pretty strong um, Buff oh, Pally build. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean. Secret Mage is Secret Mage. It probably just got way, 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 way better with some of the new cards. Um, and coming out for Awful Artist for the Pog Merchants, we've got a Buff Pally as well. Yep. We've got the Reno Priest. Yep. You've got the uh, uh, Over- Giants yep. lock, which is gone. Or no, it's still there anyway. Um, oh, no. If... Yes, and um, ba- 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 Warrior is the Odd Warrior. That's right. That's which good. is that, uh, I guess, block, armor up, mill style, uh, the similar to the Rogue, just gain a bunch of armor, but we're not going to see the uh, Priest. Q block, and we oh, will sorry. not see the um, um, Paladin from yeah. Awful anyway. So I'm going to let the players get rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling. All right. Um, what do you expect to see coming out here first, Saku? Uh, 
I'm going to say Warlock is going to come out for, um, who am I looking at here, for Mortal Wombat slash uh, an awful artist, and Paladin, probably for Snake Fods. Yeah, I think Snake Fods is definitely leading that with that Paladin. I, I, I don't know um, anything different. And then, yeah, the Warlock's definitely... I think the warrior is probably going to be saved for a little bit later. Um, but the priest is always, I always find Reno priest is just that deck that can definitely get there and, and yep. do some crazy stuff. So um, we'll have to see for sure. So it looks like both people are in. So let's mortal Kombat or sorry to the awful artist is going to be the first to spectate slash bottom of your screen with snake fuzz at the top of your screen. Mortal Kombat. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Had a chance to see that uh, this this weekend. Did you? Yeah, it was good. Nice. Probably second after the original, obviously. But oh yeah, I don't think anything was it Arm Armageddon. No, yeah, what is it? It was Annihilation, which was Annihilation. I knew it was a long, big A word. Capital trash. They were so good. All right, we are going to see the Warlock coming out from Mortal Wombat, a.k.a. Awful Artist. Uh, but we see the Rogue coming out for Snake Fod. So yep. um, <clears throat> I have to assume that um, very different game plans in this one. Uh, I think the Mortal Wombat is going to be trying to end it pretty early with, yeah. you know, cheating out some giants and things like that. Yep. Whereas um, Rogue is going to want to shut it down pretty early. I've never seen, I haven't seen too many rogues other than the uh, the weapon rogue, I'm going to call it, but the, uh, I can't remember what that legendary oh. weapon Oh, uh, Kingsbane. Kingsbane. There you go. Kingsbane Rogue. So, Yeah, I think that's, especially with the poisons that have just been released with the new set. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I agree with you there. That uh, That's probably um, the only one that I've seen from Wild. And I, I know Mill Rogue of old um, from, from, you know, back in, well, before Cold Light was, was rotated out. Was, mm -hmm. was Cold Light Hall of Famed, or was it just rotated? Rotated, I think. Yeah. I think just rotated, yeah. So, as soon as Cold Light left, I mean, that kind of got rid of that entire style of deck, and uh, Lab Recruiter obviously came out um, and and just really made it, but some things like Efficient Octobot coming out um, and being able to be played this swindle, so there's just a lot of things that now... <laughs> <laughs> facilitate this deck and allow it to be <laughs> yeah snake fuzz is doing snake rogue fuzz. things yeah just what cards you don't have cards man wow um well there's just... a flesh giant so a agony goes a long all right well dark glare let's let's mortal walmart says well i want to draw some of my own cards i am controlling my own fate all right, so Spirit Bomb going to be able to come down here. Um, we'll lifesteal off one of these minions. Raise Dead will then be able to play a free Flesh Giant. Nope. Oh, free Flesh Giant. My bad. So, Wow. If... Uh, I don't Animal know. Animal Giant. <laughs> This is what it's all about with this uh, Darkler. Um, yeah, oh yeah. So. Being able to gain so much mana yeah. back there with these Cobalt Librarians and the taps, yeah. that was just an insane turn. <laughs> Here we and are in turn four. <laughs> we do see the Cloak of Shadows, which, I mean, might have to come out right now for Snake Vods. Um, evasion, also um, an option. So definitely has ways to stall out to get to vanish um, two turns away. And there's a card in Snake Fod's deck I haven't seen in a while, which is Skulking Geist. Geist. So Yeah. That's, um, that's an oldie but goodie. That's just spells, correct? Yes. Yeah. So really just kills the Solarium and Over. Spirit Bombs and Power Overwhelmings actually yeah. as well. So... Yeah. Kills a little bit of that 
uh, burst damage that um, the warlock might be able to throw out. All right, Cloak of Shadows is coming down here to just stave off a little bit of damage. Lothad, bam. Whew. So that, I believe, locks out anything else, and we're about to push a casual 20. 28. Just a random 28 out of... Actually, backstabbing... I mean, we have the power overwhelming in hand, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Neophyte. I don't know what we're looking for. I guess we burn prep. I think... Yeah, that's it, right? Yep. Dark Claire just jumps on four, and you are wow. dead. So. Explosive starts from both players, but Wombat... Uh, A.K.A. Awful Artist able to get there with the Lothab. All right. Wild's, wild's crazy, man. Giant coming down. Like, that was a... I, I couldn't even <laughs> APM that turn from <laughs> Awful Artist. Like, I couldn't even think to, to, to do that much with Dark Lair, right? In my mind, Dark Lair is like a zoo, right? It's yeah. cheat out minions and whatever, but... I mean, this is why these guys are, are, are up here at the top of their wild games, respectively. Okay, so... Warlock with the big win. We got Priest and Rogue again. Yeah, um... I feel like this is a... Geist keep, maybe? I guess you just want to get to your cold lights as fast as you can um, and be able to burn some of those cards out of your opponent's deck that are, you know, really important. Mm -hmm. Anduin, not Anduin. Um, Reno's and, oh yeah, Anduin and Raza. So. Yeah, the old Raza, not the new Raza. Or Kazakas, sorry. You got Kazakas that's kicking in there as well. Yeah. Making potions instead of golems. He's always making stuff. Kazakis is such a handy guy. And then the great Zephyrus. I don't miss that card. <laughs> Neither do I. For some strange reason. So Yeah. Wild growth pickup, pretty standard. Just wants to be able to uh uh Curve out next turn and gain the mana. Get a little closer to uh, being able to play stuff from the deck. And there is Kazakus, the man, the myth, the legend. Bet to make some spells. Let's do this spell thing. All right, here's the tasty fin coming down. Going to be able to draw both those cold light oracles in the deck for... Um, Snake Fods, and hopefully going to be able to start popping off with these uh, these mill turns. Efficient Octobot picked up as well. No real way to activate it just yet. A pretty interesting card in this matchup Ooh. might be the Dirty Rat. Um, yeah. If it's able to pull the uh, oracles. Yep. Or even the Skulking Geist for that matter. So Yeah. That's also a Raza. Uh, which is pretty nice. I'd... Spirit Lash. Thalnos is an option that does draw both the Murlocs anyway. Um, and then you could Dirty Rats behind that move. Spirit Lash coming out with Dirty Rat. Ooh. Oh, well, I guess no armor, but we did miss the uh, the cold lights. But, I mean, Snake Fods is, uh, he's got a lot of cards in, in hand, so these yep. cold lights are going to play against himself soon. 
I might just coin a skulking here. Many options. And what would that burn in skulking? It would burn. It's a lot. Holy smite, uh, potion of madness, power word, shield, and renew. Yeah, so uh, three cards. Not bad. Um, also, just sticks a four six on the board. Yeah. Let's see what it. You no. Know, it turned all the cards backwards. You jerk. <laughs> you big jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> I thought it'd be, since his cards are facing upwards, it should have showed, but it didn't. No, just denied you. Yeah. So we're going to seance an additional. He's going to try and pull these uh, cold lights out. We don't get it. Head fake. Hysteria. Oh, psychic stream. Okay. Uh, we're still not really able to juggle these cold lights, so... Probably you might see one come out here, but then you're just giving card draw to artist. Yeah. Um, who's playing pretty smart actually is keeping his hand relatively low. Um, I think that's why we haven't seen Raza played or Kazakis because really he doesn't want to be adding additional cards to his hand right now. It's true. Mind you, he just lost some of his low cost cards to kind of do the whole. Ping, ping card, ping stuff that Priest does. So, Vanish coming in early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, still, I guess, gives him another chance for the Dirty Wrap, but then there's still three minions that are still in the deck. I guess technically four with the Glacial. So, I mean, there's a, a one in six chance, I guess a two in six. So, a third chance that he grabs one of these cold lights. Um, but yeah, I know. I think Priest can still do a ton of damage, I believe, with the Spawn of Shadows. Um, just being able to deal quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, each turn with each ping. Um, but you are right, those low cost spells are, are going to be really tough. Um, I wouldn't be surprised just to see a Raza or a Kazakas here, both are fine. You might. Get a one mana? Do you go for a five? Yeah, okay. Yeah, one so, mana it is. Maybe two, summon two. if he grabbed the summon and give two two. And armor. Oops. Okay. Dirty rat comes back out again, that would be ideal. I believe that's the only thing that has died this game for him. No, the Thalnos has died as well. Yeah. Yeah. Freeze. Another burn. So that's just gonna. There goes. Wow. Yeah, there goes the potion. Yeah. Um. Interesting. Yeah, I, good, I didn't really know. Good read why we held thoughts. it, but. Mm. Okay. Well. And one coming in. Yeah. So I mean, from this position. Um. Walmart pretty much has to count lethal like every turn. Yep. Um, clearly, right now it's it's decently far away, but I mean, each spawn of shadows is going to be doing six to snake fods. So I mean, we are getting closer. Um, Geist has taken the one mana spells out, so we're looking for some low cost stuff. I think maybe that was the case for the one mana spell, mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately, He's Geist comes stuck. right back out. Yeah. Another freeze. Double Octobot. No. Yeah, I think uh, these cold lights might start coming down. It's awkward because Snake Fods doesn't want to give Wombat more cards, but at the same time, it's kind of the whole point of the deck, right? Is to just gash your opponent of resources. But with no Shadow Steps found, yep. uh, anything like that, these cold lights are just really just sitting in hand from the beginning. 
And we Dirty have rats a... Gonna... Oh, my oh my goodness. goodness. How, do you... How do you miss? Well, <laughs> take all that junk, he says. Uh, it's all yours, buddy. Hey, there's the arm. <laughs> Surprise. So now he doesn't have to worry about the dirty rat antics anymore. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, he could still get a raise dead. Um, True. We do have one in the deck, but that would be uh, at the draw through quite a bit of cards before we get there. Yep. And uh, I think Raza, right? Yep. Pew, Raza, Pew. No more pews. Now you can just pew for the fun of it. Pew, <laughs> pew your own guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! And he's gonna dodge another round of pews. Way to go, sneak fuds. Gains thirty-one, up to thirty-one. So. Um, still slowly away. So, here's where Cold Light will come out next turn with the hero power of mm. Sneak Fods. Yeah. Yeah, I like the pass from Wombat there. You've got some very good low-cost cards. They're all going to generate you stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think you really care what happens on these Cold Light turns coming up. Um, you've got 10 cards left in your deck, so you're going to draw four of them and possibly burn the remaining six. So I think that's fine. The novice is going to be able to push basically six damage with the Shadow of Spawn. So Here we're going comes. to 35. Well, there's Polcat, and there is another one drop with the Nightshire. So Cold or Light coming out with... Penance is really good, and Palm Reading is extremely good to discount some of these spells. Um, last six cards are, I believe, Hysteria. There's an Insight in the deck. Uh, I think that's pretty much all our low-cost cards now. So, oh, there goes the Raise Dead. Yep. Another time. Do we do it again? Shadow again? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just more defensive tools. Insight gone. Start pinging this board down, I suppose. Yeah, make sure that the cold lights don't survive, but hoping that he doesn't have his other cold light in hand, but... Which we, we do see, unfortunately. Destroy three. Oh, that's a card. Uh... Probably divine him, yeah. Heal yourself and then <laughs> deal yep. deal additional to your opponent. And here goes Polkett. It's gonna reorder the deck. So uh, Reno is actually possibly on top of the deck there. So Reno, uh, Talon, and I don't know what else would be in there. Um, I'll have to find out because I can't think. Well, we do have the website there, so we can check that out. That's what I'm looking at, and I still don't know. There's so many cards. Alusia. There you Aha, go. Aha! I got there. I did it. Um, this is going to burn oh, the... Reno's gone. Yeah. Intelligent Ford Ring. And uh, shuffle into your deck. And actually gets a Kazakus, uh, but now there's duplicates, so yeah. <laughs> that's fine. No duplicates, and... but now there's duplicates. But that's what this uh, deck is supposed to do: is basically poke and run, and then overdraw, causing pain, grief. Yeah, and and then uh, you know find the brand and and start making your opponent fatigue draw for so much a turn. Right, so there goes a Lucia. That's going to proc the evasion. So that should be it. There's no more evasions. There's no more uh, cloaks. And Valyria the Hollow has already been played. So we believe that's all the defensive 
hiding tools anyway. Actually, there is one more Cloak of Shadows in the deck I just saw, so um, we could definitely draw down to find that. Cold Light into Cold Light. An additional cold light is going to fatigue for 11. And then one more next turn should seal the deal because then you can't really spawn of shadows, right? Um, that kind of locks that out from that perspective. Penance and divine him are nice, but I believe that's lethal that is the lethal is of lethals i think penance penance is three divine him it's kind of, yeah, found okay. lethal <laughs> no, your victory proves wow the mill road gets there after a lethal. pretty slow start um those oracles were sitting in hand for a very long time Pretty much collecting dust uh, for, and, for the uh, whole thing. Yeah, and dodging two of the... Mm. Actually, sorry, three of the uh, dirty rats. Dirty, yeah. Dirty rats not hitting were so, I think, key for that matchup. Because yeah. if we get the if he gets those out and kills them, that's it. Uh, there's just there's no coming back from that. All right, so we're going to see... Awful artist coming back out with that priest into Snake Faw's buff pally. Don't know if the buff pally has the edge here, but I'd certainly like to see what HS replay says. Select wild, select. Priest. Think. Combat or Wombat probably wants to find all his early game removal. So, I mean, this potion of madness is going to be doing well. Um, although, you know, eventually after the hand buffs come out, it's just not going to be able to successfully steal anything. Mm -hmm. um, Thrive in the Shadows. Penance is probably nice. Breath of the Infinite feels too. Yeah, Penance. Yeah. HS replay doesn't uh, doesn't have that kind of stat where it's going up against yeah, matchups, which is odd. I, I feel yeah. HS is kind of strained with wild. I think it gives a lot of good, but it doesn't really give matchup specific just yeah. because yeah. there are so many different Various. styles of decks. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I find that to be a bit uh, cumbersome for for HS replay for wild anyway, but. Uh, I'm going to Holy Smite here. Draw two minions. I'd like to think that uh, um, Raz Priest has got the, the edge. Yeah, the uh, the removal that it has should pretty much just get there. Like, this Mass Hysteria is going to be pretty good when it finally decides to pop off on, like, turn five or so. Yeah. Um, Zaka's uh, top is is pretty pretty spicy as well. Get that five cost. What is Elene's will? Oh, coin and note the Raza. Next term is lore, lore Keeper. Pull Kilt. Good old Blade Master Samaru. Looking at, uh, see what cards he can. There we go. It's a plus three attack with the Conviction. Samaru. I don't know if that was. Take care of business there. Going all face there with 14 damage. 
dropping mortal or uh, awful artist down to 16. Good timely uh, hysteria there. Trying to keep keep the damage as low as possible. So what do we have? Knights of Anointment. What kind of spell are we going to generate here? Here we go. Hand of a doll. Twice or once? Smuggler's Run is tempting. Gonna buff up one big beefy minion. Yep, gonna do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this buff ballad, I mean, it's it's getting there. You know, we've already got nine with the chill blade, so we've got thirteen. Uh, we're getting there, closer and closer. Yep, hysteria might be the card right now to. Well, maybe not. Well, yeah. Yeah, just to stave off anything that might come out after the fact. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Four drink coming out. Little pew pew action on the one one. Maybe he decides to play any of these uh Horse riders and things like that. What do we got right now, actually? Uh, we have 18, and we're at 5. So that's 10, 14. That's lethal. No, we don't have the mana. Oh, we don't have the mana. Yep. 6. Oh, uh, yeah, we're 3 mana away, unfortunately. Oh, for all the charge minions, yep. Yeah. yeah. Needs to do it before turn. Turn 8. If Anduin falls on the ground here. So what do you do here? Crab Rider. Don't worry, Lux. The cavalry's here. Yeah, it's good. Ten damage. Either deal with me or don't. And die. <laughs> yeah, just putting as much out as you can. Oh, they put that out there first. I wonder if they would have had. Oh, well, is what it is. Might have, yeah. The conviction on the charge minions is definitely could be great. Zephyrus could pull. Hmm. Is it ever is Zephyrus or just Hysteria? This guarantees a clear. Kalen yeah. protects any nonsensical charge and a little more yep. healing. No dispels on the other side. No, no dispels, but I guess Zephyr is, is a dispel on a stick, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice little heal if we can ever kill that zombie chow, but... Uh... All right. So Zephyr's on six mana. I don't think it gives us anything we really want. So Kazakis for we could only get a one mana. We could novice Zephyr's go for a master spell. That that gives you four mana. Yep. What does six give us? A brawl? Ooh. Shadow or Rune. Yeah, that's a good one. Yes. That is healing. I hope you like my invention. So quick action here by Awful Artist. Tree to the face. Yeah, being able to stave this off, but... Um... Can't guarantee the hits on the Argent and the Chill Blade. We got 12. Oh, double brooms on there. Wow. So. I mean, there's 18 at a hand. Mm -hmm. 
And this hungry crab. Mm. Oh, wow. Are we... Do we have lethal some way with his conviction, no matter what it hits? I think he's doing the math right now, unlike us. Yeah, no, that's lethal. Yeah. It just had to hit... It had to not hit this 3-4, pretty much. Yep. Um, is essentially the only way to get through that. And got through, it did. Yeah, Stinkbot's finding that... Uh, Spicy little hand buff paladin victory against the priest. Going up two to one in the series right now. Yep. With mage left. And do we see awful artist bringing the priest out again or warrior? But I'm thinking, thinking he's going to have to go priest. Yeah, I think it's got to be priest for sure. Warrior, I don't think is going to do it. No, although blade storms, brawls, hmm, maybe because like occult conjurer, um, are really the way that you know they can run away with it. I do think it's probably the priest. I think mortal wombat, um, awful artist is deciding what he does want to bring. It's a difficult decision. I'm not crazy well versed in it, but I think the priest just can do a lot more. But I guess if the mage can never kill you with their burst through cloud prince and valets, you just don't die, right? <laughs> that's, how, that's how that works, right? If they can't kill you, you don't die. It's, it's as a priest you heal you you shouldn't die yeah so it's a uh, tough decision because the, the warrior doesn't really interact with the board very much so I guess we'll see what awful artist had decided and he has decided on the priest as you had said Yeah. Oh wow, this is a pretty nice opening hand for probably just Chuck back to the Cloud Prince and maybe the Valet. Um, looking for a secret and does find the rigged fair game, wow. so that is pretty much guaranteed to go off. That's a good, good streak. Yeah. Oh, it's the second ball lucky. Wacky. You can just say, hey, what's up? I just want to. Yeah. Just playing wow. some, some spell priests. Just, uh, just hanging out. Yeah, he can lackey. He can lackey fair game. And then next turn, he can coin Arcanist <laughs> if he doesn't find a secret into lackey, into secret. And then Cabal the next turn. <laughs> this is just. Yeah. Oh, well, and there's the counter spell. Oh boy. Wow. That is eight cards in hand on turn two. Okay. Can you imagine drawing three cards for one mana on turn two? Yeah, we just saw it. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. Um, so this is actually a Cabal runner as well if he wants to play the Lackey, Lackey Secret coin. Uh, could be a crystal runner this turn. Right. And the counter spell does protect that pretty well. Lackey. Counter spell. My goodness. <clears throat> this is a very, very good start for snake bods. Yep. Disposable Thanos. Yeah. Uh, mad Scientist or Archaeologist. I mean, Archaeologist gives you the other secret. Probably the best right now to be able to play with the Occult, but also to play with the Flak Mage if you have to. Yeah. Um, I guess you also could have just pinged. Yeah, but I don't know if I probably... hit this right now. I just... You're scared of Spirit Lash. I suppose.
Like there that. There it is, yeah. And didn't pick um, it. Okay. Yeah, at this rate, I mean, the Spirit Lash clears off one minion. Um, yep. Penance. Penance is, yeah, I was going to say, Next best turn. interaction with the board. Um, explosives is a free runner. And kills whatever he plays. My goodness. So. Reno's a turn away. <laughs> There's some luck. 5-5 five, five hitting each other. That's not lethal. It's very close. This is literally one off. And but. Reno is probably going to close the game. Wow. And 23. And Reno's dead. <laughs> I mean, he's... Dankfot still has a lot. He's got 16, like 10 on board, plus the fireball is, is still very strong. Um, you just got to hope he doesn't run out of gas or card draw. He really wants Sage at this point in time to just uh, draw the remainder of his deck, essentially. So this, this is definitely going to be a brawl. Oh, yeah. Ooh, KS Nova. What the? Okay. Quickly played. I almost didn't follow what was going on. But. Yeah, wow. Wombat is just playing like a fiend here. There's the rigged fair game. Oh. So, um, we got 12 from hand. Draw a secret. An incredible so, Sphinx has nine cards left in this deck. This is, I mean, is fatigue ever a problem? Uh, he's at 19, and, and really, with no Raz, Raza, or Enduin in sight. True. So the block is up, and a counter spell is down. Man, is Wombat playing fast. Holy Hannah. So there's the Sage that draws six cards, so... Out of eight um, that he's got? Yeah. That'll That's, fill his hand That up. is... I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> like... Well, he could if he did the... Yeah, Flak Mage and Sage. But... Yeah, I, I just mean, like... Drawing... Like, you're just going to start dying, right? There's yeah. not really much more reach except for the double Cloud prints in the deck. That's what you're really waiting for. Uh, An Ice Sakis. Block is going to guarantee stick. Deal three damage, draw a card maybe. Yeah. Explosive ruin. And so we're almost at lethal range right now if for we, sneak fods. If we don't clear this lethal. Three damage. Any penance? Dirty rat. Getting played. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate because you're just giving him a 5-5, five five and that's game. That's it. Well. Wow. Casually dealing what? He had 23 and a 30, so 53 50, uh, health? Yeah. That's just shoulders Secret off. Mage. Woo! That game was lightning fast. It was. It was. But Snake Fods is going to take a 3-1 to one victory over Awful Artist. Wow, that was some... Fa I, I can't get over how fast Artist was playing that last game with that Priest. <laughs> like, just... I, I couldn't even keep up with his Kazaka's Potion picks and his... Uh, it was... That was just fast and furious. And, I mean... To his credit, he got very, very close with that Reno, but I guess Secret Mage just has a lot more reach than expected, uh, than I expected anyways. Uh, I played not being couple... able to... Go ahead. I was just saying, with not being able to clear the board, he was, he was a lot, was still uh, pushing face. Hey, Snake Vods, how are you, man? Uh, I'm alright, is this the secret chat? This is, this is secret... the secret Friday Night Fights stuff. Yeah, this is the, you gotta keep us on the DL. Yeah. All right. Nobody knows we're here yet. 
right. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Congrats on the win tonight, man. At 3-1, uh, that last session there between Mage and Priest just seemed to just like, okay, card, I got this card. Throw that card. That's card's gone. All I right. mean, that's, that, that's just kind of secret, Mage, isn't it? You just yes. Kinda... It's a secret. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. That's bad. Anyway, <laughs> it's the old man to me. So, but uh, yeah, that walk us through your first uh, first couple matches there. I'm gonna be honest. That first that first Dark Lair match, because uh, it was it was Mill versus Dark Lair. Uh, I think that should have just been a concede for me because that matchup is abysmal if you don't draw Evasion or Cloak of Shadows, and especially since he dropped Lotheb like on not on curve but you know to lock me out. Mm-hmm. Like that that's just the concede. Dark Lair is a good deck. <laughs> yeah, it goes super fast as as we both saw. I mean we thought you did pretty well um with the opener that you had. And Yeah, but I mean it just shows you Dark Lair's the best deck in the game. Yep. It's like, hey, well that that was nice, and here's what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I mean just drop three giants on turn four. Yeah, yeah. Dust your shoulder it. off, you're good. <laughs> so and then uh after that, it was uh, which w- that was the Mill Rogue and Reno Priest, right? Yeah. Okay, that one I I was actually really I'm really proud of that game. I think I played super well to pat myself on my own back, you know. Yeah, you didn't give didn't give much choice, and a, a I don't know if it was this match or the other match. The Rogue, yeah, the Rogue versus Priest was was crazy with the the three dirty rats, and they weren't even didn't even touch the uh, cold light at all, which was surprising. Oh yeah, that was that was uh, me high rolling my opponent. <laughs> I'm uh, super lucky. You know? That's that's you holding, clutching those two uh, cold light cards tightly so you wouldn't take it. Yeah, it is the <laughs> it's the skillful not getting dirty ratted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and then obviously the the last match there with with uh, with priest and. And yeah. we we didn't we didn't think that he would bring out his warrior um, versus the the mage. So just I I think it was uh what's it, I'm not sure the actual numbers, but I think I think it's odd warrior that's better. But then again, you know he brought odd warrior. I don't know how to play odd warrior. Okay. <laughs> There's... Yeah, the only with the odd warrior, I was thinking just the constant armor gain and uh, being able to control the board a little better might have been in his favor but um went with the priest and honestly we thought after the reno we didn't know how much reach you really had left in the deck but i mean you kept all the fireballs and pretty much on his reno turn you still had 10 damage on the board so um dealing a casual 53 in in (laughs) one game with with the secret mage is is definitely the way to get the win there yeah i mean i i think it's just because of like like a cult conjurer, you know? That card, it generates 8-8 eight, eight for 4 mana, and you just get to drop it on 4, and you win. Same thing with Runner. You just drop these all these stats so early, and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, Runner on 3 was uh, <laughs> it was good. It was really good. <laughs> or was it 2? It was 2. It was 2, because I coined yeah. it out. Yeah, it was 2. You coined it, for sure. But, yeah, no, uh, that yeah. was... That was intense. That was insane. Uh, getting your guys on the board for the first matchup uh, between Pog Merchants and uh, Felmy, I'm a wreck. So, congratulations on that one. All right. Thank, um, you, thank you. Do you think so? It, when you say, I guess, you say if the Dark Glare is the best, why would you bring the uh, Cube Lock then? I guess. I'm not a huge wild player. So, if oh. I hear best deck, I typically think. Bring it. <laughs> Here, here's my secret. You ready? It's called okay. not. It's called not being able to play dark glare very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Fair so enough. I brought. I brought the easier deck. Fair enough, man. I I respect that. Okay. And, and cube can get there pretty fast too, but uh, it's. Oh yeah, I mean cube is yeah. It, it's it's a classic, you know. Yeah. I enjoy it because there's there's some I guess there's some decks like cube was was around in standard right. Yeah, I don't think there was a. I mean, there was a Dark Claire Warlock in standard, but it was a Zoo Lock, so it's completely different than what the Wild uh, Dark Claire does with Giants and things like that. So, 
I think with something like QBlock, people have a lot more experience playing it in a standard format. And then when it gets to wild, you can refine it and add better cards. Whereas Dark Lair was only a wild thing, really. Yeah, because uh, what's it called? For for Cube, if you notice, the same thing that was good during KNC, which was Skull on 5 into Void Lord on 6, mm-hmm. that is still like at, a, at the heart of the deck. You know, you play Skull on 5. You, vo- you drop a Void Lord on 6. You just have to actually get there. And you win. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes. Jeez, I, mean, I gotta brush up on my, my wild hearthstone there. I gotta say, that secret mage made me very happy and makes me want to play wild. So. <laughs> come, come play wild. You'll fight only secret mages at hand buff paladins. That's great. <laughs> I'm gonna mirror match them every time because I loved, loved Mean Streets of Gadzazan, and I always tried to make Paladin, a th- like buff Paladin a thing. I loved it. I didn't matter how many times I lost. I friggin' loved playing it. So the fact that Wild has a legitimate form of it now, um, it just brings the it just brings a tear to this old man's face. <laughs> yeah, now now's your time to shine. You have to pick up Wild. There it is. That's maybe it. I'll maybe I'll dabble. Me and me and you, Corden. Let's let's uh, let's do it, man. Generate a team or try and join a team that that wants to take these take these, these old guys on. So <laughs> so all right, Snake Fuzz. Well, thanks again for for joining us here and appreciate uh, your time and, and, and congrats on the win tonight. No problem. Thank you so much for the interview. Nope. Yeah, no worries. Before, so. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night, bud. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll find you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you got her. In what? Hero or Legacy? Uh, Legacy. Legacy. Yeah, we're on, uh, we're on stream at 9 uh, ET tomorrow, so. Yeah, easy, easy, snake fuzz. Don't worry about it. I'm a scrub, <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible. Yeah. There's well, no... I've been playing wild. I haven't been playing standard. <laughs> well, ah. see, just bring Dark Glare. He won't know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we got plans. All right. Well, enjoy your night there, Snake Fuzz. Thanks again. Thank you so much for the interview. Bye bye. Nope. Take care. Congrats, man. Yeah, Snake Fuzz is an awesome guy. Played him a couple times in, in Legacy and uh, managed to win both times, I believe. But. What a great player, and winning a championship last year through that uh, special, uh, God, what was it called? The community one. He won the, the Hearthstone oh, tournament the, there. The the duo one? No, it wasn't duo. It was like uh, we had the a few communities come together. Like, uh, uh, Oh, that was... The um, rivalries. That was a few years ago. Yeah, it right? was a few years ago. I thought it was last year. Anyway. No, I because I I, uh, I I remember hearing about it, but I don't think I was around for it. Cause I've only been around for two years now. Oh, okay, two seasons. That was a great great outing. Great uh, three seasons. Yeah, three seasons. You'd be three seasons. So two pro, and then this one. This is my third yeah. season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. that was fun, man. It was super fun. I'm I'm not sure what's on the docket for this weekend, but. Uh well, things have been uh, pretty rough because of the uh, the a uh, bunch of the players are are playing tournaments right now. So yes, so yeah, um, I know a lot of people like Ron, for instance, was uh, playing in um, Masters Tour and you know Kalis Luna. So there's a whole bunch of people and subs and stuff. But I do know I don't know about the 8 p.m. show, but I'm pretty sure Saturday tomorrow has full clocked shows. I, um, I'm looking on the spreadsheet right now, I don't see anything, but I'm sure Don Day's got his stash of of game, uh, matches there. Yeah, so so when Snake Files and I offered the 10, he said he had a 10, so we dropped to nine. Okay. So at least there's a nine and a 10. Um, so that's great. Uh, I would assume there's an eight then, but I can't really be sure. And then Sunday, I know there is a little bit for school stone on Sunday. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So we got Blue Spartan and Trito 2 versus... Oh, sorry. They're, it's Blue Spartan versus Trito 2 uh, for Legacy. Uh, mm-hmm. Then we have Interval uh, versus Buse uh, also for Legacy. So that's at 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. On nice. Sunday. And then we do have the classic tournament, but I don't think that's being streamed. Or is I'm not too sure. I haven't heard anything needing streamcasters or ops yet. Yeah, we haven't uh I spoke to Dusharmo about that in mm-hmm. 
if there's if it spills over if they get enough players into the classic and it spills over into the Sunday unfortunately um, the two Sunday casters that we have dollar bills and Myanodon, are actually casting for house rivalries yes. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, tournament as well so um, yeah if anybody wants to to cast I can certainly help out with that and we definitely have BGs with uh, Steffi and uh, Blue Sombrero yeah, when does that tournament start on it's Sunday? It's supposed to be 5, 5 p.m. Eastern. Oh, yeah, so it might. Uh, 32 teams, 9 p.m., 4 hours. They shouldn't hit BGs. Shouldn't. I'd hope not anyway. But It's, <laughs> it's classic. It can't go that far. Yeah, we can't yeah. go that long. B- BGs, well, it just depends on the players and all that stuff, but still. BGs will be yeah. starting 9, nine on, the, on the dot, so regardless, I, it's going to be shown, so. I guess I guess I hope no people playing in the classic tournament are in BGs. <laughs> that, would that, be, uh, that would be not a, good. They would have to lose. <laughs> they, you you can see now. Get out of get out of there. Get in the BGs. So, but with that, uh, any any left final words, parting words, as before we sign off for the night. Uh, it was a great marathon. Uh, Saku was always uh, loves love casting with you, my yeah, friend. Man, it's awesome. Uh, I took one week off, but we're back at it, and we're probably going to be at it for a while. So, yeah, for yeah. the rest of the season. So, enjoy us because we do. So, I enjoy me and you. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about self love, baby. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> all right. Wish you everybody a good night. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. All that good stuff. So, take care. <laughs>